weeks ago at Commonwealth Stadium, it was homecoming night, and the Kentucky Wildcats were gunning for their second straight SEC win. Quarterback Pookie Jones returned after a one-game absence and engineered three long scoring drives in the first half. Later, Pookie put the game out of reach, heading Mark Chapman in the end zone. Ole Miss touted the top-ranked defense in the SEC, but on this night, it was the Rebels who were completely shut down, 21 to nothing. Tonight, the Cats go for their third straight SEC win as the LSU Tigers come to Lexington. From Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, it's University of Kentucky Wildcat football. Tonight, it's the Kentucky Wildcats versus the LSU Tigers. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. By your local Ford dealer, quality people, quality products. By the Kentucky Lottery, it's your game. And by State Farm Insurance and the State Farm agents throughout Kentucky who support Wildcat football. And by Super 6 Best Quality Ford Dealers. Childers Oil Company, First Commonwealth Bank, Toyota Dealers, The Kentucky Lottery, Brazier's Farmer Supply, Kentucky Power Company, Lee's Famous Recipe, Cypress Mountain Coals, and First National Bank of Corbin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a rain-soaked Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. The Kentucky Wildcats coming off two straight wins, hoping to make it three in a row. And if they do that, that will be the first time a Wildcat team has done that since 77. Playing host to the LSU Tigers, the team Rob Romley with a lot of talent, but they have not put it together this year. Oh, no, they really haven't, Charlie. And they are coming off the worst loss in school history, a devastating 58-3 setback in the hands of Florida. They're going to be anxious to see how they bounce back here tonight. I'm anxious to see how Kentucky and LSU play in this weather. The field is wet. We'll get much, wet, uh, much, much wetter. The rain will let up just a little bit, but we'll keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Kentucky is an 11-point favorite. LSU's pass defense is porous. I don't know how well Kentucky can throw tonight. Well, it's uh, definitely a night, Charlie, where you've got to be concerned about ball security. Can you hang on to it? Can you throw it? Can you catch it? And can you keep your footing? And there has already been some problems with that down on the field in the pregame warm-ups as LSU quarterback Jamie Howard apparently uh, twisted an ankle or a knee or something, and he had to go off to the locker room. Just what his status is at this moment, we're not sure, but uh, we're going to find out very, very shortly. Kentucky's defensive coordinator is Mike Archer in his first season at the University of Kentucky in that capacity. He spent four years as the head coach at LSU, a total of seven years overall, a defensive coordinator before that. He did a great job at LSU, but his last year when he finished five and six, they weren't happy, and Mike Archer left. You see there he has an SEC championship. He shared one in 88. Well, he was quite honest at the start of the week. He said he would be lying, Charlie, if this game did not mean a little something extra to him. He spent seven years in Baton Rouge. Things went downhill really the last two seasons. You can bet he's anxious to coach against the Tigers here tonight. And speaking of the defense, Melvin Johnson, a fine free safety, will see his first action of the season for the Kentucky Wildcats tonight. He'll probably play a quarter, probably no more than that. Oh, one of the Wildcats' best defensive backs, if not the best. So it's good to see him back. We thought we might see him a lot earlier than this, however. And the Kentucky secondary, which has 14 pass interceptions on the year, will have to keep its eyes on number two for LSU, Eddie Kennison, a great, great freshman. He can do so many things. He's number one in American punt returns. Well, they've got so many fine young players on this LSU team, but the problem is, Charlie, they are also very young. He has caught 17 passes in six games, and he really, really should have a great future in Baton Rouge. Kentucky has lost to LSU seven of the last nine ball games, and here in Commonwealth Stadium, the LSU Tigers hold the edge 13 to 7. Let's see if Kentucky can get on the positive side tonight and win its third straight ball game. We'll have the coin toss and the kickoff after we pause for this on the University of Kentucky Football Television Network. Bob Romley and down on the field is Dick Gabriel. It's Kentucky after an open date, bringing in a record of 3-2 and two overall and 2-1 and one in the Southeastern Conference against LSU, 2-4 and four overall, 1-3 and three in league play. The weather is nasty, but a good number of folks have showed up, hoping that Kentucky will pick up its third straight win. If that is the case, that will be the first time the Cats have done that since the 77 team started off 6-0. Let's go down now for the toss of the coin and Dick Gabriel. 
you don't understand the penalty, tell me. I'll explain it as many times as necessary. Once you give me your choice, that's it. Can't change your mind. The choice is obvious. I'm not even going to bother you with it. I'll pick up the ball and mark it off and tell you where, where it is. Who is going to call the call? All right. Now, we're going to flip with a football centennial coin. This side, the football is heads. This side is tails. You call in there. If I drop it, we'll flip again. Heads. You call heads, and it is tails. And Kentucky, you win Kentucky the Kentucky has won the top. The third of the second half. Kentucky will defer their offense. Kentucky has deferred, and they will go on defense first of all. Well, a lot has happened in this Southeastern Conference today. Florida was beaten by Auburn. Tennessee and Alabama played to a tie, and the other night games involve South Carolina and Kentucky. Georgia won at Vanderbilt today. So, Rob Romley, you can see it makes it quite interesting in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference and even more important for Kentucky to win its third straight league game to go 3-1. Well, the whole key, Charlie, is to keep on winning, but you can see as far as moving up, the sky is the limit. Five conference games left for the Wildcats, including this one here tonight. But with that win over Ole Miss two weeks ago, Charlie, the Wildcats have really distanced, distanced themselves from the bottom part of the division there, South Carolina and Vanderbilt and Georgia. Coming up, the kickoff after we pause for this on the University of Kentucky Football Television Network. and Dick Gabriel on the sidelines. Dick. Charlie Mack, it is a soggy surface, and in warm-ups, Jamie Howard, LSU starting quarterback, slipped and hurt himself, limped off into the locker room. The doctors have been with him. He is warming up right now, so obviously we won't know until LSU gets the football if he will start. A brisk breeze blowing right to left. It will be a factor tonight. So will this slick turf. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Dick. Pretty good wind as well, Rob Romley. Oh, it really is, and the Tigers are going to be moving it into, into it here in the first quarter as they receive this kickoff. Dangerous folks back for LSU. It will go far side, fielded one yard deep into the end zone. That is Gary Pegues. Go check that. That is David Butler, who carries it up across the 15 to about the 17-yard line. David Butler has a long return this year of 61 yards and has been averaging about 30 yards per kick return. That time, Kentucky's especially folks on the kickoff team did a great job limiting him to 17, 18 yards, a tackle by Stephen Hall. Here's the offensive line for LSU. It's setters and Price at the tackles at the guards board lawn. You see the rest there, and of course, the backfield of Besh, Bishop the tight end, and the running backs and quarterback. And at quarterback, it will be Jamie Howard. He will hand it off to Sharp. Jermaine Sharp across the 20, works his way out to about the 24-yard line where he's tackled by Marcus Jenkins, the senior out of Long Beach, California. So a good gain on first down for LSU. Let's set the defense now for Kentucky. The ends are Bean and Carter, the tackles Lofton and Collins. Lofton getting his first start of the season. The linebackers Moore, Deuce Williams, and Daryl Kahn. Kahn is getting his third straight start. His former walk-on. And the secondary, Cannon Hall, Jenkins, and Robinson. Of course, Marcus Jenkins, a strong safety. Number two in the NCAA with five pass interceptions. LSU looking at third down at about four. Howard will give it to Sharp. Sharp across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Had to get it up across the 28 to pick up the first down. He's hit down by Marty Moore, the senior linebacker out of Fort Thomas. There's Sharp's numbers. And a good look at Marty Moore along with Zane Bean. It's short, Charlie, short by about a yard. So third down and one. And our first third down situation of the game is you look at Curly Holman. Down on the sidelines for the Tigers in his third year with a record of 9 and 19. LSU sets up as if to go for it. Well, they got to go for it with third and one. Here it is right up the middle. There's first down and more. Crossing the 30 out to the 33-yard line is Jermaine Williams. They call him Juice. He is the fullback. Don Robinson, the corner, makes the tackle for Kentucky. Here's another look. Now they got a fine center in Kevin Mawai. Get a good block here. Open up a hole. Pick up the needed first down yardage. And LSU, without good field position, moving into the wind here in the first quarter, records a first down on this opening series. And that is very, very important. Keeping it on the ground here in these tough weather conditions. 
LSU only has three rushing touchdowns on the year, the longest seven yards, although they've had some big runs from scrimmage and a couple of big pass plays. One set back behind Jamie Howard. He'll go to the deep back. That is sharp. He's pinned in, tries to get to the corner, being chased, and gets it near the first down marker across the way as he passes the 40-yard line of LSU, and he's knocked down by Marcus Jenkins. Jermaine Sharp had a 53-yard run against Auburn. Well, it looks like Marty Moore has got this thing walled off here, and but then they break it to the outside. Looked like they weren't going to get anything. Get a good block there on the outside on Willie Cannon and get it right up close to the first down stick, just shy, second and one. From the 42 of LSU, this game is just underway with 12.37 remaining opening period from Lexington, Kentucky. Slot is to the near side for LSU. Howard pitches to Sharpie. Howard picks it up and goes down at the 34-yard line. So there's a break for Kentucky. It'll now be third down and eight yards to go. Second down, short yardage situation. Could do just about anything here. And the pitch just slips right through his hands. Either that or he just did not see it. And it was right through his hands. It looked like a good pitch. Howard alertly falling on the ball, but that really hurts. Now it's third down and long yardage. Whole different situation now. Third down and eight. They place it down at the LSU 35-yard line. LSU usually starts off with a game great guns offensively and goes down to score. Many times a field goal, but then they sputter after that. Here's a pass complete out to the near side and knocked down hard at the 41-yard line, shy of the first down, will be Shedrick Wilson, who catches his 11th pass on the season. He is cornered by Daryl Kahn, the linebacker, and cornerback Willie Cannon. Get it out here to the near side to Wilson, then he's going to try to cut back in and pick up the necessary yardage for the first down. Kahn and Cannon have got him cornered. And Charlie, you're right, LSU had scored on four of its four of its six games on its first possession but not here tonight Scott Holstein will punt the average is just over 42 yards yards a kick with a long of 65 and Matt Riazzi back in single safety for the Kentucky Wildcats he'll stand at the 20 a 6-5 putter gets it away wobbly kick Riazzi will field it wisely because it went right to him he's on his feet and he gets it up near the 30-yard line, and as he's hit from behind, he does get to the 30-yard line. So another good move by Matt Riazzi, who's done such a great job back there all season long after a 36-yard punt and an 8-yard return. Let's pause for this on the U.K. Football Television Network. Deep in the Kentucky Territory, but he feels it and gets 8 yards. Oh, a nice little step there to pick up some extra yardage, and... Of course, Matt's role in the offense has been diminished now with Alfonso Browning playing so well, but I tell you, he wants to help out this, this team any way he can. One of the real unsung heroes of this Kentucky team. Let's set the Wildcat offense now. The tackles are Page and Askin, the guards Parks and Rich, and the center is Wesley Jackson. And the wideout, Mark Chapman, who had a great game against Ole Miss, six catches for 79 yards and a touchdown. There's a rest of the arsenal. With the exception of quarterback Pookie Jones, and there he is as he sets up out of the gun on Kentucky's first try on offense tonight. 10:49 remains, first quarter. Jones with time, guns it long for Browning. Can't hang on to it, and it's out of bounds anyway. Alfonso's playing with a cracked rib. He took a helmet in the back this week. Here's the LSU defense. It's a defense that has only four sacks, four interceptions. And here are the linebackers, Robert Dishotel, Calais. And there's the front, Gilliard, Miller, Pullett, and White. The secondary. And here is Kentucky on second down at 10. Again, it's the gun. Screen set up. Swung out. To keep his feet across the 35 to the 37 yard line. And Kentucky will be looking at third down and about four. Corey White on the tackle for LSU. Wildcats throwing here on first and second down, trying to take a little advantage of this wind here. They've got it at their backs. Swing it out to Randy Wyatt. Comes up across the 35 yard line. Still going to be about four yards shy of a first down, however. They see Mo Williams, a talented freshman, number 10, standing beside Pookie Jones, and there are Pookie's numbers. Third down and four from the Wildcat 37, and players jump across the line of scrimmage. 
Kentucky, illegal procedure. That'll cost them five. Kentucky has been penalized very few times this season. And there's a the referee, Dick Burleson. A legal procedure against the Kentucky Wildcats. So instead of looking at third down and four, they will be looking at third down and nine. There's Bill Curry, the head coach, hoping to keep this momentum going and pick up the Cats' third straight league win after defeating South Carolina on the road and then Ole Miss here a couple of weeks ago in a shutout, 21-0. Ole Miss, by the way, shut out Arkansas today in Jackson, Mississippi. Here's Pookie on third and nine. Guns it, Browning, banged into right at the point of where he possibly could have caught the ball. It is ruled that both were going for the ball at the LSU 45, and so Kentucky must punt. Covering was Anthony Marshall. Anthony Marshall back there along with Rodney Young. And the crowd thinking that there should have been a little call here, but uh, we'll get another look at it. Pookie throwing for the sidelines, and right there, it does appear as though Anthony Marshall makes contact. Daniel Ariza punting for the second game in his collegiate career, gets off a good kick. Eddie Kennison at the 22, jitterbugging, now straight up the gut. He is so dangerous. Number one in the NCAA and punt returns, then he shut down just shy of the 35-yard line of LSU by Dante Key on a fine open field tackle. Eddie Kennison is oh so dangerous. Talented Charlie young over player. 19 yards per punt return. That's right, 19.3, Charlie. 10 for 193 yards. This is 11th return of the season, trying to pick up a block there on Dante Key. Couldn't quite get it, but still a fine, fine return, and LSU has it at its own 35. A 46-yard punt and a 12-yard return by LSU. Lariza does another fine job kicking the ball for Kentucky. Split backs behind Jamie Howard. LSU second try on offense. No score with 9.27 to go initial period. Deep drop. Howard got a man open in the flat. Can't hang on to it. Incomplete pass intended for Robert Davis, a sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama, who has played very little this year, came in as one of the most heralded backs in the South just a couple of years ago. Matter of fact, in 92, Rob, he had a 76-yard run for a touchdown against Texas A&M. That is the longest ever by an LSU freshman. Now back to the eye for LSU. Slot to the near side on second down and 10 from the Bayou Bengal 35. Give it off to the deep back. That is Sharp. And Sharp rams it up to about the 40-yard line at a gain of five. It'll be third and five for the Tigers. Sharp, normally the fullback, is playing in the deep back position at tailback. LSU's offensive line firing out, and here comes Sharp just trying to pick his way here. And it looked like John Collins was the first fellow who got in there and stood him up just a little bit. And Kurt Soupy and Marty Moore. Main Sharps numbers on the night. Shotgun for LSU, third and five. Moore coming on the blitz along with Deuce Williams. Howard rolls away from it, fires on the run, man open, diving catch for the first down. What a catch it was by Scott Ray, the senior out of Baton Rouge. First down Ray. LSU. Experienced receiver and a great, great catch. Here's Howard rolling to his right. This young fella's got a strong arm. Watch him zip this ball, but it is Ray who has to reach out for it and catches this ball with his hands. A little more so with the left hand to pull it in initially than with the right. Great, great catch. And at 22 yards, the ball is at the Wildcat 43-yard line. Wide receivers left and right there, Kennison and Ray. Ball goes to Sharp. Over left tackle. Gets it to the 40 just inside the 40 of Kentucky. So a good gain on first down. Getting up at the bottom of the pile is John Collins. Number 92, the senior from Madisonville. As you get a good look at Jermaine Sharp, who will leave the game. As LSU will send in an extra tight end and take Sharp out. Or a new tight end, I should say. Second down and seven. Bishop down the middle, just over his head. At the Kentucky 22, and he had him wide open. He's a big target, too, at 6'6", 250. The coverage by the free safety, Stephen Hall. 
Pass a little bit overthrown, Charlie. The tight ends of LSU caught eight passes last weekend against Florida. Bishop caught one. Lafleur, David Lafleur, caught four. Chris Hill caught three. So they have really found the tight end here of late. And Chris Hill that time was set up as a flanker. And then, of course, it was Howard who went to the tight end in type. Bishop, third down, seven. From the Kentucky 40, 7.33 to go first period. No score. Howard rolling. Chase missed by Moore. Dumped off short. Incomplete. It's fourth down. Tried to go to Chris Hill, but number 32, James Tucker, was right there. And then, of course, earlier, Marty Moore wreaking havoc in the LSU backfield. So LSU will putt for the second time. And back on is Scott Holstein, the senior from Baton Rouge. And Riazzi will stand at the Wildcat 10 to receive. Play held up momentarily. May need a dry ball. Apparently the rain at the moment here has stopped. And we have really played this first quarter right now with, without the rain falling, although it was raining constantly throughout warm-ups here tonight and uh, in the couple hours prior to the football game. But fortunately, right for now, it has stopped. Weather forecast says it will stop here in the first half, then we'll pick up in the second half. Hopefully it won't, but that's the forecast. Kick is away. Riazzi calls for the fair catch, feels it, drops it, scrambles for it. He's got it back at the 15-yard line. We'll be back in just a minute. We're scoreless. Kentucky and LSU here in Lexington. Talking with Riazzi, probably saying, hold on just a little tighter and please don't give me the chance of having a heart attack. <laughs> well, the Wildcats came out throwing on their first series, Charlie. Let's see what they do here. They try to take advantage of the somewhat suspect LSU secondary. Up under center for the first time in the last series, all from the shotgun. Here's a give up the middle to Damon Hood, who rambles across the 25-yard line. He's going to be a couple shy of a first down. Damon Hood, the junior out of Bowling Green, averages just over three yards a carry, and he gets about eight there. Quick handoff right up the middle to Damon. Going right behind uh, Wesley Jackson there, and is that Barry Rich, I believe, clearing the way? Big gain on first down. Mike Marshall and Corey White of the tackle for LSU. Second down and a short two. Pitch goes to Mo Williams. Nice run for the first down, up across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Mo Williams, who comes in averaging just over five and a half yards a carry, gets Kentucky's first first down. Gilliard, defensive end on the tackle for LSU. Mo Williams had a big night here. In the thriller against Florida that Kentucky lost, he had 109 rushing yards in that game and a 70-yard touchdown scamper, which is the longest run from scrimmage in the SEC this year. 6.20 to play first quarter. Again, no score. Jones option pitch. Williams. Williams still going and may have picked up the first down in a great second effort. Anthony Marshall, the senior automobile, really has this played well, but Mo Williams just isn't going to let him bring him down. Here comes Anthony Marshall up to play him. He has good position and just can't hang on to him as Williams keeps his legs going and picks up the first and ten. Kentucky's second first down. Folks want you to be sure and join us tomorrow and every Sunday for the Bill Curry Show with Rob Romley, Ralph Hackett, of course, Coach Bill Curry. Check your local listings for time and station. First and ten, Kentucky in the scoreless first quarter with 5.48 to go. Give us to Hood. Hood stacked up this time after gaining a yard or two. Ike Pullett getting off the bottom of the pile along with number 56, Mike Cali, redshirt freshman from Patterson, Louisiana. This LSU defense really feels as though they have something to prove after what happened to them last weekend against Florida. And you know, a lot of times, Charlie, teams get embarrassed like that 58-3. to They really come back the next week and play pretty well. And this LSU team, remember, they played pretty well on the road this year. They won at Mississippi State. Yes, and it was scoreless against Texas A&M in College Station. And they seem to play better away from home. Option. Jones strings it out. LSU strings him out, and he goes down. Going to lose a yard or two. Back to the 41. 
Mike Calli is there. Well, not a good decision there by Pukki. Fakes the handoff here to Damon Hood. Of course, there was nothing there, and he's got Riazzi in front of him here, but nothing but white shirts. Great defense by LSU. LSU has got the option played and played well. So it will be third down and eight for Kentucky as Tim Calvert is into the ball game. Did not play a couple of weeks ago against Ole Miss. He is number 95. And in the slot is Randy Wyatt. To the near side, it is Alfonso Browning from the gun. Third down, Jones steps up. On the run, he's got to tuck it and go. He's got the first down across the midfield strike to the LSU 48-yard line. And it is a gain on the play of 11 yards. And the rain now starting to fall again here at Commonwealth Stadium. Pookie can't find anybody open under the gun. And you wonder here if the block downfield by Terry Samuels just enabled him to pick up that needed yardage. Big scramble by Pookie Jones. You see the rain starting to come down once again, Rob, as we take a look at Pookie Jones, the two carries for 10 yards. That was actually an eight-yard gain on the play. First and 10. Pitch to Mo Williams. Knocked back. This time Collard after he gains possibly a yard by Anthony Marshall, who has been very busy tonight, as has Corey White, the defensive end. White last year, season high nine tackles against Kentucky. Down in Baton Rouge, the Cats won that one. There you see Damon Hood leading the way. Terry Samuels trying to get a block outside, but Anthony Marshall getting in there. Boy, he's been right in the center of things so far, closing things off in a hurry. From the 46 of LSU, it's second down and eight. Lone receiver, Chapman to the near side. Jones, play fakes, rolls right, looking for Samuel. Samuels has it, tripped up, first down. Tripped up around the 33-yard line, Terry Samuels, who will gain on the play for the Kentucky Wildcats 13 yards. Knocked down by the corner, Rodney Young. Now, a lot of people may have been wondering, where's Terry Samuels been? You know, Charlie's only caught, what, a couple of passes this season. Here he is pulling in a big one for a first down. They will mark it just outside the 32 of LSU. Fourth first down in this drive for Kentucky. Scoreless with 242 and counting left to go in the first period. Here's a give to Damon Hood. Smacks it off right tackle inside the 30 to the 29. And the Bring Wildcats. Second down. Right now, with an impressive drive here late in this first quarter, this march, remember, started all the way back at their own 15 or 16-yard line, and they have now marched it inside the LSU 30 and have the first serious scoring threat going in the ballgame right now with 2.17 left in the first period. Allen Stansbury made the last defensive play for LSU. It is second down and seven. They'll mark it just inside the 30. Jones wants to throw, looking for Chapman deep. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Chapman got it. Oh, what a play by Mark Chapman. Torrey James was covering. It was a perfect pass. Good defensive coverage, but Chapman just went up and get it. Remember, two weeks ago, he had a 33-yard touchdown catch in the far corner that was unbelievable against Ole Miss. Now, Torrey James complaining that Chapman pushed off, and here they are here. Oh, look at that. Chapman twisting around and pulling the ball in. Just a great, great catch by Mark Chapman. And this ball lofted up nicely by Pookie Jones. 27-yard pass play. First down, goal to go, Kentucky. Two tight ends, power set. Williams dots the eye. Jones will give it to Mo Williams. Dives over the top, gets a yard to the one. Mike Calli on the tackle for LSU, the linebacker. This has been a beautiful drive for Kentucky. Let's see if they can ram it in there. Wildcats played a strong ball control game last season down in Baton Rouge. I think in that one, Charlie, they were able to control the ball for better than 40 minutes of play. Here it is, second down goal to go from the one. This is the 11th play of the drive. Again, the power set. In the middle is Raymond McLaurin, the fullback. Or the wingback, I should say. They give it off to Hood, the fullback, and he can't get it in there. 
Trying to play smash mouth football to ram it in, and you see LSU excited to keep Kentucky out of the end zone. Here's this LSU defensive front getting down low and firing out, and Damon Hood finds the going rough. He's hit before he gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage, and it's pushed back. It pushes it back to the two, so he loses about a yard. Third down goal to go. 24 seconds to go, first quarter. Jones to Williams, right side. Is he in there? He is short. No, I thought for sure that time he would get in, but nothing doing. And you got to hand it to that LSU defensive front as they have held up here just by inches, but the Wildcats are not in the end zone yet. And they will go for it. Fourth down and goal to go. You see Bill Curry shouting words of encouragement. Or maybe they will. But first, we'll go into the second quarter. The end of the first period of play, scoreless between Kentucky and LSU. We'll be back after you watch this. The end zone crane, Sham Fannin runs the camera, provided by Duncan Machine Removers. And they're right on top of this play. Kentucky, fourth down, goal to go. The ball is placed around the one-yard line, inside the one. This will be the first play of the second period. LSU has played valiantly in keeping Kentucky out of the end zone on this drive. Kentucky had first down goal to go from the two after a 27-yard pass play from Jones to Mark Chapman. Two tight ends there, Reeves and Samuels. Hood, McLaurin, and Williams out of the eye. Jones, the quarterback. Quarterback sneak over right guard. Is he in? He may not be in there. No, I would not think he so. He is not in. LSU takes over on downs. Great goal line stand by the LSU Tigers as the Wildcats had it first in goal at the three, was it? And could not get it in the end zone. Everybody in tight. Pookie trying to sneak over the right side and nothing doing. As LSU really gets down low and closes everything off. And it was really no doubt about it. As Kentucky is denied the end zone. And you have to wonder, Charlie, just how that might uh, fire up this LSU defense for the remainder of this ball game because we've got a long, long ways to go. Kentucky blows a golden opportunity. 13 play drive and 724 off the clock, but nothing to show for it. LSU tries to get some breathing room. Now, of course, the good thing is the Tigers are right up against their own goal line here. Quarterback Jamie Howard actually standing in his own end zone as he took that snap. It's going to be awfully difficult here under these conditions to work it out. Tigers have the wind at their backs now here in the second quarter. Kentucky's going into the wind. There you see Jamie Howard, who was drafted in the second round out of high school, and is now under contract with the Atlanta Braves. He's a very fine pitcher this season, completing about 43% of his passes, has had an off year. A young man, though, who has incredible talent. One receiver far side. Howard, after the play fake, wants to go to him, looking for Eddie Kennison. Sherwood's on him. Incomplete upfield at the 42-yard line of Kentucky. Sherwood with him, step for step. A good look at Eddie Kennison. They call him Boo. Howard going long here down the right sidelines. This pass, though, overthrown. Does a good job setting his feet and lets it go. Sherwood right with him every step of the way as Bill Curry takes Sherwood along the sidelines there. LSU on third down is two of four. Out of his own end zone, Howard rolls right. Fires, man open, Kennison. Just shy of the 10-yard line, it will be fourth down. He did not get across the first down marker, but LSU does get some room to kick it away. Covering was Adrian Sherwood, making sure he did not get the first down. So it is Scott Holstein who comes on to punt for the third time tonight. Holstein will have that wind at his back here, but you see Matt Riazzi, he's in LSU territory at about the 49-yard line for the Wildcats. 
should get excellent field position out of this. He's had kicks of 36 and 33 yards tonight. His season's long is 65. That was in the opening game against Texas A&M. Matt Riazzi, single safety. End over end kick. Riazzi will have a chance to do something with this one. Right up the middle. Riazzi breaks through. Across the 35, the 30, the 25. Matt Riazzi. A great punt return. Tackle by Gabe Northern. Riazzi feels it and takes it straight up the gut and returns it 20 yards after a 39-yard kick. Well, he got a block there by Willie Cannon and saw the opening. Good alert play by Matt Riazzi as he saw Cannon knock a man out of the way and just saw it open up right up the middle and broke it down well in the LSU territory. And the Wildcats here now early in the second quarter are threatening again. 13.46 to play second quarter. We are still scoreless. And if you happen to join us late, Kentucky had a 13-play drive that took 7.24 off the clock, had it first down and goal from the LSU 2 and could not ram it in. LSU took over. We'll be right back. You're watching the UK Football Television Network. Part of the Cats pause if you want to keep up with the Kentucky Wildcats in every sport. You may call area code 606-278-3474 or get in touch with them with a card or a letter at 2691 Regency Road, Lexington. First and 10, Kentucky, after the 20-yard punt return by Matt Riazzi. Option, pitch back, Moe lowers his head, dives near the first down marker. A little bit shy of it, just shy of the 15-yard line. Anthony, Anthony Marshall. Marshall makes the tackle. Good execution on the option here to Mo Williams, making the handoff. It's a block there from Alfonso Browning. Nice pitch right into the hands of Mo Williams, and he's got room on the sidelines here before Anthony Marshall is able to force him out of bounds. Good look at the uh, freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. Mo has seven carries for 36 yards. It's second down and about three. Jones after the play fake, looking for the tight end, Samuel T's got it! His second touchdown catch of the year, his second catch of the game. And Kentucky goes on top of LSU, 6-0. Alice brings back memories of the Wildcats opener against Kent here about six weeks ago. Terry Samuels over the middle, and he goes up to get it and hauls it in. And a big guy out of Louisville has not seen the football very much as of late, but you see him break open right across the middle there on the LSU secondary, and he beat Anthony Marshall and took in the pass for the touchdown. Now the point after attempt coming from Yuha Leonoff out of the hole of Matt Riazzi. The hold is high, but Riazzi gets it down, and Leonoff kicks it through. With time out on the field and 13-33 to go in the second, it's Kentucky 7, LSU nothing. Check your local listings for time and station. Of course, you'll get to see the highlights of this game. And also, they'll be talking about the upcoming game next week down between the hedges in Athens, Georgia, against the Georgia Bulldogs. And this afternoon in Nashville, Georgia all over the Vanderbilt Commodores. Well, it sounds as though that Georgia team's playing a little bit better, Charlie. And, boy, look at the rain starting to come down now. For the first eight minutes or so of this ball game, the rain had stopped. But it is pouring down once again. And the Wildcats... Moving into the wind here in the second period. Thompson will kick this ball off into the wind. David Butler, number 40, to the near side, and Eddie Kennison, number two, to the far side. Butler returned the last kickoff. Eddie Kennison, number three in the SEC with a 25-yard average. He has a long kick return of 42. Butler's long return is 61 this season. As we told you earlier, Butler's averaging about 30 yards per kickoff return. LSU is a team number two in the league in kickoff returns. Fielded inside the five by Butler. Butler knocked down at the 30-yard line. Yeah, not a bad return. That's something that LSU has done so well this year. Not just punt returns with uh, Kennison, but they've done a good job on kickoff returns. This was something, Charlie, that really hurt them in the ball game last weekend against Florida down in Baton Rouge. Their, their special teams and their kicking game really let them down, but seem to be doing a better job of it here tonight. 
Van Hiles makes the tackle. He is a freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know this game is very special to him. There are Howard's numbers throwing the ball. It's two of six for 22. From the 30 of LSU, the handoff is to Sharp, getting to the near sideline, making a good cut, and getting it upfield about the 38. Tackle by David Snarden, the sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. Well, they blocked this play pretty well. Get a lot of running room here to the near side of the field. You see Mawai throwing a block. Snarden trailing the play comes up to make the stop, but uh, not before Sharp is able to get about seven yards. Mark it on the 37. It will be second down and three. One set back behind Jamie Howard, who's gone all the way at quarterback. I'm sure we'll see Chad Luke later on. Here's the give to Sharp again. Sharp just shy of the 40. So it will be third down and a yard or two for LSU. The tackle by Howard Carter, number 53, the junior college transfer out of Dodge City, Kansas. Bill Curry over on the sidelines is gone without the hat tonight, getting a shower out on the field as it is just continuing now to pour down here. Ball spotted at the 39, third down one for LSU. 12-17 remains, second quarter. The Cats on top, 7-0. It's Toomer for the first down to the 42-yard line. Robert Toomer tackled by Marty Moore. Toomer, the 5'11", 220-pound sophomore from Sylvester, Georgia, broke the Georgia career high school rushing record held by Mr. Herschel Walker. Good strong run here by uh, Toomer. You see Snarden grabs him there, and he, he pushes Marty Moore back. There's a lot of strength, a lot of strength in his legs. LSU's third first down. Slot far to the right side. That is Hill in the slot. Howard with a checkoff. Stumbles as he drops to throw. Goes far side. Catches it. Out of bounds. And it's a good thing because the Kentucky defender over there stumbled and fell around the 50-yard line. Lost his footing. That was Adrian Sherwood. Could not get to the open receiver who caught it out of bounds. Number 87, Brett Besh, the junior from Slidell, Louisiana. Last year against Kentucky, the young man you see there, Jamie Howard, threw for 218 yards. Kentucky won that one 27-25 in Baton Rouge. Gave Bill Curry his first SEC road win. Of course, the Cats have a league road win this year at Columbia, South Carolina. Howard back to throw in second and ten. Might now open across the middle is David LaFleur, the tight end for the first down to the Kentucky 46-yard line. It is a 12-yard gain, the tackle by Adrian Sherwood. Now we talked about how they threw to their tight ends last week, Charlie, and here they go again. LaFleur right over the middle. There he is coming open. Big guy caught four passes against the Gators, and he turns it upfield here, gets the head down, and it's into Kentucky territory first and ten. He is the former Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year. First down LSU, the ball spotted at the Wildcat 46-yard line. Cats on top, 7-0, 11.25 to go in the second. Howard, quick pitch. It is sharp. Sharp to the 40. Collared from behind by Sherwood at the 36-yard line. Close to another first down. Look at the running room that opens up here to the near side. Well, they get a good block there from 68. Ben Bordellin, freshman left guard. Open up a lot of room. And LSU here moving the ball early now in the second period, trailing 7 to nothing. You see Melvin Johnson in the football game now with that cast on the right arm, that fractured forearm, forced him to miss the Wildcats' first five. Howard, give it off to Sharp. Good cut for the first down. Gets it to the Kentucky 32. Tackle by David Snarden. LSU now ripping off good chunks of yardage and moving the football. David Snarden trying to close in and cut this play off here, and he can't quite get to him in time. First and 10 for the Tigers, and they are moving the ball. The best LSU has moved it all night. Fullback, who is lining up at the tailback spot tonight. Slot to the far side with Hill in the slot. First down and 10. Give it off to Sharp again. Sharp this time hit, fumbles the football, but falls on it and will lose a yard or two back to around the 34-yard line. 
And that's the kind of thing, Charlie, that we're going to see throughout this football game. We saw Matt Riazzi have trouble hanging on to a punt a little bit earlier. Haven't really seen too many of the players have trouble with their footing thus far, but it's just going to be that kind of a night. Tough night to hang on to the ball. You've really got to secure it. We'll get another look at it here from our end zone camera. It slips out of his hands there on the, on the handoff, and very fortunately, he is able to get to that thing before Deuce Williams did. From the 34 of Kentucky, second down and 12 now. Slot to the near side this time with Hill. Howard looking his way, fires for Ray instead, overthrows him at the 28-yard line. So it is third and 12. Adrian Sherwood was hoping the ball could have been a little bit lower so the Cats could have picked up their 15th pass interception of the year. And if Sherwood could have gotten it, that would have been his second, but he could not. This ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can pick up who it is here. Yeah, might have been Billy be Lofton. To tip that one. Might have been Billy Lofton. I'm not sure. It's very, very hard to tell. But that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 12. The flare out to Davis. 35-30. Penalty marker goes down. 20 hit hard. Down at the 15-yard line by number 25, Melvin Johnson. The hanky is thrown back at the 35. And we just could have holding here against LSU. I think the block over there in the hold was helps was what helped spring Robert Davis. Yes. And you hear the crowd reaction to that call because that is going to bring back a big, big LSU gain. Critical penalty here against the Tigers. And I wouldn't be surprised here if we're able to pick it up. It may have been the split end uh, back. Brett Beck, who was holding on the play. Let's see if we can uh, detect who it is as Howard swings this one out to the near side. And there it is. It's on Deuce Williams, and that's 87 Beck, I believe. He's on 32, not, not on Deuce. James Tucker. On James Tucker, right. So that nullifies a 19-yard gain, and the penalty pushes it back upfield of the Kentucky 45. So it will be third down and a bundle. From the gun, Howard. Third down at 22. Howard steps up in the pocket, goes across the middle, overthrown, intercepted. It is Marcus Jenkins with his sixth pass interception of the year and Kentucky's 15th overall. Jenkins came into this game number two in the NCAA with five interceptions, and there is number six. Howard trying to go long here, right down the middle, and it looked like he was trying to hit his tight end, Big Howard Bishop, with the pass way overthrown. <laughs> Marcus Jenkins is there again, and he's now only three away from tying the school record for a season. Marcus Jenkins, a junior college transfer, having a fabulous senior season. Pookie Jones will work out of the gun from the Wildcat 20-yard line. Kentucky leading LSU 7-0. 8.56 to go in the second. Jones with time. Throws it short and throws it behind Terry Samuels at the 25. Torrey James covering on the play. Well, not a well-thrown ball there. That ball thrown low and behind Terry. And not much chance for him to pull it in as you see Ray Dore, Kentucky's offensive backfield coach there along with Matt Riazzi and Mo Williams on the Kentucky sidelines. Second down 10. Hood standing beside Jones out of the blue gun. Jones fires it quick. There's Randy White at the 27 across the 30 to the 31 yard line to a first down but appears to be about a half yard short let's see ricardo washington hits him down now one thing that bill curry wants to do is get the ball in the hands of this man more and more because he has that phenomenal speed good look at randy wyatt who had that explosive touchdown run down in columbia against south carolina a few weeks ago and well, you look back on that run is really turning things in the right direction for the Kentucky Wildcats. Got a measurement, Charlie. Bring it to the near sideline. Wyatt, of course, had to sit out last year for transferring from Louisville. 
has played both that is short has played both tailback and wide receiver or flanker short by a couple of inches third down there's Jamie Howard on the headset shaking his head Kentucky's defense like many teams this season giving the opposing quarterbacks a head shake or two third down and inches cats dig in Tigers dig in Riazzi's in at wing back now, in the middle of that stack eye behind Hood and between Williams. Quarterback Snake Jones easily gets two yards on the play, just needed inches, takes it over right guard. Yeah, that's exactly what Pookie would have wanted to do down at the goal line. A little bit earlier in this period, was not able to get it in there, but he picks up the needed yardage for the first down there, right behind Barry Rich and center Wesley Jackson. First down. Got to take your hat off to the fans who are out here on a night like this. Miserable weather conditions, but I tell you, there's a good crowd here watching there this is. football game. There really is. First down, number seven for Kentucky. The Cats lead at 7 nothing. Just over eight minutes remaining until halftime. Jones pats it and is sacked. Number 54 for LSU, Corey White, gets his second sack of the season. The senior from Shreveport elated. That's been kind of a rarity for this LSU defense this year, Charlie. I think as a team, they've only got like four on the entire year. That's the fifth. There's number five. They have not had very many at all. Big loss. Loss back to the 23-yard line. It is a loss of eight on the play. Corey White turned in a good game down in Baton Rouge against the Wildcats last season. He had nine tackles in that game against Kentucky. And a sack here in the second period this evening. 7.40 left to go in the half. They're going to have to reset the play clock. Make sure it functions correctly. Alfonso Browning, you see there, number 86, a real big play guy in this Kentucky offense, has his high school coach here tonight. All the way from California. You see our score and time on the clock. Kentucky certainly does not want to give this ball over on a turnover to LSU and give them a chance to tie it up or get a field goal. Because still, this is anybody's ball game, obviously, as we're still in the first half. Second down to 19. Jones swings it over. Randy Wyatt with white shirts all around him. And he gets it up to around the 29-yard line, and that is all. He'll get six. They try to get a screen going here, and, and Barry Jones is out in front. White trying to get behind the wall. Pookie under some pressure. You see Jones kind of loses his footing right there as he tried to throw a block. And Wesley Jackson trying to get in and help him out. Couldn't quite do it. And Ted Workman, number 70 for LSU, caught him. So it is now third down at about 13. On third down, Kentucky is one of three. Jones steps up, fires, got him in open, Coward for the first down, and he really gets popped. Upfield at the 46-yard line and a gain of 17 yards. Hit hard by Anthony Marshall, but Calvert, the senior, hangs on. They get some pressure here on Pookie, but he shows a lot of poise, steps up in the pocket and fires it down to the middle to a wide open Tim Calvert. And it has been a while since we saw Terry Samuels handle the football. It's been a while since we've seen Tim Calvert catch one. Timmy did not play in the game against Ole Miss because of a hamstring injury. From the 46 of Kentucky, first down and 10. Jones on the option will pitch at the last moment to Williams. And Moe will get two, three yards on the play. No. And there's a penalty marker down. May have got his face mask. No? Why have been taunting. There is a penalty marker down. Call oh. us a forward pass, possibly. Yes. Yeah, that's what it was. Pookie waited too long to get rid of that football. 
Faking it to Damon Hood. Riazzi comes up to block. And good defense by LSU there as Rodney Young stepped up to guard Pookie Jones and he lets it go forward. Ahead of the line of scrimmage. And should be loss of down. Just under six minutes to play in the half. Kentucky leads on a 25-yard touchdown pass in this period to Terry Samuels. It was Pookie's fifth touchdown pass of the year and Samuels' second touchdown catch of the year. The ball will be spotted at the 42. Should be second down. It is as they flip the box over. Second down and about 15. Chapman and Browning, the receivers to the far side, to the near side, Wyatt and Chapman. Jones steps up again. In trouble. Caught. Number 70. On the tackle from behind, Torrey Workman. He's made a couple of big plays here in this quarter in the last couple of minutes, as a matter of fact. Torrey Workman's a sophomore out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. LSU continuing to get the pressure and getting good coverage downfield. And the Tigers record their second sack of the night. Third down and long. This time from the Wildcat 41. You see the Cats' third down conversions and the average on the season tonight, 50%. On the season, 32%. Jones pats it, fires it, Browning caught it. First down, Kentucky at the LSU 37-yard line and a gain of 22. More and more, Alfonso Browning has been the big play guy in this Kentucky offense, and he comes open here right in the middle of the field. Pookie Jones has time, finds him right amongst three LSU defenders and it's a big gain down to the LSU 37. Jones back up under center on first down. Jones is 9 of 12, chucking it for 78 yards in that touchdown to Samuel. Give it off to the deep back, Mo Williams. Going to get about five on the play. Hits it over left tackle. 4-24 and counting left in the quarter. Kentucky leading against 7-0. Robert Deschotel, inside linebacker out of Lake Charles on the hit for the Bayou Bengals. Boy, if the Wildcats could get it down here and get a touchdown, Charlie, they've overcome a lot on this drive. They overcame a penalty a moment ago. They've overcome, what, two, two sacks, I believe? Ball is marked inside the LSU 35 at about the 33. Second down at six. Give the first man through. That is the fullback, Damon Hood, to the 30 or maybe just inside it. And he will come up about two yards shy of a first down, and it will be third down. Gabe Norther, number 88, middle linebacker, a sophomore out of Baton Rouge on the tackle for the visitors. And into the game, number seven for LSU, a defensive end, James Gilliard. Checking out Gabe Northern. Third down, call it closer to three as they mark it dead on the 30. Kentucky three of five in third down conversions. Jones fires out in the near flat that is caught by Mo Williams and boys, he popped. He has popped around the 28 yard line. Looks like he doesn't have quite enough for the first down. He really kind of got his bell rung, but popped right back up. Got two yards, needed one more. So it is now fourth and one. And certainly on this slick surface and the fact that Yuha Leonoff does not have the long range right leg, you feel that Kentucky will surely go for it. First sale measure. Certainly would have to think so, Charlie. And remember the Wildcats going into the wind here in this second period. And, and the wind may have let up a little bit as the first half has moved along here, but not much. Now they're going to bring the chains over all the way from the opposite side of the field. We're going to have a measurement here. It's very hard for us to see along the sidelines. It's, it's short. See the early indication. And as the referee grabs the chain there, it's short by I'd say a good half yard this will give them an accurate spot as they bring it into that near side hash mark 
Fourth down, now we're set to go. And Kentucky obviously goes for it and catches LSU napping. LSU's going to have to call a timeout. They had to try to get players on and off the field, and they were standing back there. And they're going to have to burn the timeout with 3.08 to go. Our score, Kentucky 7, LSU nothing. We're just over three minutes away from halftime. Sideline and quarterback Pookie Jones just talked with wide receivers coach Joker Phillips. And there is Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator, who is quite interested in this game, obviously. Listening for the call offensively. Bill Curry on the headset. And Antonio O'Farrell right there wrapped up with uh, the raincoat around him. And here's Pookie now coming back on the field for this fourth down situation and less than a yard as you see part of a good crowd here tonight at Commonwealth Stadium looking on. Fourth down conversions. Remember the goal line stand by LSU. In the second quarter, early, 0 of 1 on fourth down conversions. Fourth and just under a yard is Mo Williams, who hits it over the right side for the first down to the LSU 25-yard line. Rodney Young and Anthony Marshall had to get to him first of all and then try to sling him down, but Williams easily has the first down. She blocked there by number 21, Raymond McLaurin, and I'll tell you, it was a good one to make sure that Mo Williams got the needed yardage. Good, strong hit by McLaurin to clear the way. Williams, eight carries for 42 yards, 246 and counting left in the second. Kentucky up by a touchdown and point after. One receiver, far side. Jones will pitch it back to Mo. Georgia. Now you see Robert Deschatel, number 46 here, trying to close in on Pookie, but they get the pitch to the outside and get a block there for Matt Riazzi, and then Torrey James here just can't handle him. He's going for the football, and he can't get it. I really think Torrey James tried to strip him there, couldn't get it out of his hands, and it really cost him as Mo Williams went down the sideline. Down to the two, first down, goal to go. Two tight ends. The give us to the deep back, Williams, who has hit hard. May have lost a yard and fumbled the football. LSU is saying they got it. No indication as yet. Big ball down by contact. Kentucky luckily will keep it as Mo Williams really took a pop. You can see his head snap, Rob. He was hit and hit hard. And look at the rain continuing to crash down here. Get another look at that from our end zone camera. Oh, good hard hit. I'll tell you, somebody else that Can was uh, bent back on that play was uh, Damon Hood. He was rocked back. Ball at the two. Second down, goal to go. Jones gives it off, or actually has it taken away from him, I think, by Hood, the fullback. And Hood may get a yard, and it's third down, goal to go. And here are the Wildcats again as they did right at the very start of the second quarter, struggling right down at the goal line. Anthony Marshall got hurt on a fourth down play just a moment ago, and he is on the bench for LSU, as you see Bill Curry pacing. LSU has to have some confidence here, Rob, down just 7-0, and knowing that they had a bad situation first play of the second quarter, Kentucky had a first down goal to go from the two and couldn't get it in. Third down and goal from the one. Jones gives it off to Williams. Touchdown, Kentucky. Mo Williams scores his third rushing touchdown of the year, and the Cats are up 13-0. Terry Samuels over on that side at tight end, and McLaurin and Damon Hood leading the way, and they provide the blocks. As Dishatel, 46 there, is blocked out by Raymond McLaurin. And the freshman, Mo Williams, is in the end zone. It's 13-zip. Here is Lynn off out of Riazzi's hold. It's good. And with time out on the field and 104 remaining until halftime, Kentucky 14, LSU nothing. 
a great drive by Kentucky to go down and score and go up by two touchdowns. A drive 17 plays, 79 yards, and 7.55 off the clock run. 14 to nothing now, and you look back on what the Wildcats overcame on that drive. They overcame a penalty and had to overcome a couple of sacks. Came up with some big, big pass plays. One to Alfonso Browning. And of course, a big run by the freshman Bo Williams just prior to the touchdown to put Kentucky down deep right near the goal line. 14 nothing now. Be sure to listen to the Big Blue Lion on radio every Tuesday evening at 7 Eastern time with Coach Bill Curry and the voice of the Wildcats, Ralph Hacker. And Kentucky's Dan Thompson set to kick off to LSU. David Butler and Eddie Kennison back deep. Butler's to the near side. You hate to see these guys back deep get their hands on the ball with a clean catch. They are so dangerous. Squibbed along the ground. Fielded by Pegues at the 25 jitterbugs and, all, jitterbugs and almost has his head taken off at the 25. And tempers began to flare. And it looked like it was Melvin Johnson who got down there in a hurry to hit him. Our sideline camera run by Torrance Muldeer is being shuttled back and forth on a cart provided by Hayden's Outdoor Sports. And you look very warm and comfortable and very stylish. Where did you get that gear? The garbage bag look, Don't huh? tell me a fire sale. <laughs> the garbage bag looks great on it. First down and 10 with 56 ticks left in the second quarter. LSU in possession down 14 to nothing to Kentucky. Howard on the run. Got a man open complete for the first down upfield at the 42. It is Harold Bishop, the tight end. Tackled by Willie Cannon, the cornerback. Get a quick look at it here as LSU now hustles up to the line of scrimmage. Good protection. Howard has time and there's the tight end wide open. 48 seconds now on the clock left in the half. And LSU obviously going without the huddle. Trying to get something on the board before halftime as the clock begins to run down to 43 seconds now. Out of the gun, Howard has it. Fires a bullet, broken up. What a great defensive play by the redshirt freshman out of Paducah, Keo Wilson. Great break on the ball. Knocked it away from Kennison. Throwing to Kennison along the sidelines and trying to get him out of bounds. Again, Howard with good time. Watch Keo Wilson here reach in and whoop. I don't know if he got a hand on it or not. It looked like Kennison simply dropped it. I think he may have impaired his vision. Second down and 10. Howard. And a step up and go. Running out of bounds to stop the clock, and he does with 28 ticks left. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line of Kentucky and an 18-yard jump. Big play by the quarterback, Jamie Howard here. LSU not with much time remaining. And he sees daylight here to the right side, breaks ahead of Dante Key and is able to get out of bounds, and a big, big gain on top of it down into Kentucky territory. They have to... Hold things up now, move up the chains as it is at the 38. Rob, if they get close enough, got a very fine field goal kicker and Andre LaFleur, who has won a game this year with 10 seconds to play, beat Mississippi State in a 23-yarder, has long range. Howard gets away from the pressure of John Collins, fires on the run, broken up by Willie Cannon at the 28-yard line, intended for number 17, Scott Ray. 20 ticks left. Let's go, team. Good look at Mike Archer, who's a head coach at LSU and had an SEC championship to show for it in three bowl games. John Collins with the heat here, but can't hold his footing. And watch Willie Cannon jump in front of this one and just tip it away. Second down and 10. Kentucky leading LSU 14-0. A touchdown pass from Terry, from Pookie Jones to Terry Samuels and a one-yard run by the tailback, Mo Williams. And the two-point after is by Leonard. Howard with time, throws it, Ray's got it. Inside the 20 at the 18 yard line, Marty Moore on the tackle, the gain is 20, and we've got 13 seconds left on the clock, and LSU will take a timeout. 
Well, a moment ago, Willie Cannon was able to get in front and knock it away. He is not able to do it this time as LSU connects right there, just beating him. And a big, big completion it is as Marty Moore comes in to make the tackle. Give the Tigers credit, Charlie. What a big touchdown it was a moment ago by Kentucky to go up 14-0 in this game. LSU didn't want to go into the locker room without any points on the board, and they have marched right back down the field and are now in excellent position here with 13 seconds to at least get a field goal and get on the board. Mentioned Andre LaFleur, their very fine field goal kicker. He has hit 10 of 12 this season. That ranks him in the top three in the NCAA. He has a long kick this season of 49 with room to spare. He has had one block. He's averaging a couple of field goals a game, and I think that puts him right up there along with the young man from UCLA, Bjorn Merton. So LSU trying to get something on the board with 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Kentucky up 14 to nothing. Bill Curry's teams are 8-2 and two when they have had the lead going into the locker room at halftime. Spread set, powered out of the gun. LSU can stop the clock one more time with a timeout. Howard steps up to run, fires a near sideline, Ray takes his eyes off the ball at the 11 and simply drops it. He was heading goalward, took his eyes off of it, and now LSU has eight seconds left. Well, I think that's all he did was take his eyes off it. Maybe he was thinking about just getting downfield a little bit further, and right there it goes right through his hands. Bad metal mistake. LSU runs in the Ray family. Scott's dad was a running back and a very fine running back at LSU. Eight seconds are going to go for it, Charlie. Motion to the near side, three receivers to the far side. Howard, Chase, Stinson's got him! Robert Stinson! And time is at one second as LSU manages to stop the clock with one second remaining. Robert Stinson, the junior out of Cadiz, Kentucky, gets his first sack of the year. Big play by Robert Stinson as he comes barreling through. He got past Ben Bordell in the guard there to get the sack, and LSU just barely able to get the timeout. Good look at the junior tackle, Robert Stinson, 6'4", 283 pounds. He now just whipped Bordelon. Goal attack. He really whipped Bordelon to get back there to make the sack, and here is LaFleur, who will be attempting a 46-yard field goal. It will be held by Chad Luke. One tick left until halftime. Here's a 46-yard attempt. Long enough. It is good. And LSU gets on the board to end the first half. Kentucky up on LSU as we go into halftime. The Cats 14, the Tigers 3. We'll be back with more from Lexington in just a moment. This is the UK Football Television Network. Why you... University of Kentucky Wildcat football is brought to you by State Farm Insurance and the State Farm agents throughout Kentucky who support Wildcat football. By the Kentucky Lottery, it's your game. By your local Ford dealer, quality people, quality products. And by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. And by Super 6 Best Quality Ford Dealers, Childers Oil Company, First Commonwealth Bank, Toyota Dealers, the Kentucky Lottery, Brazier's Farmer Supply, Kentucky Power Company, Lee's Famous Recipe, Cypress Mountain Coals, and First National Bank of Corbin. Welcome back to Asagi, Lexington, Kentucky. And a good crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium considering the weather. And they're smiling right now here at UK because the Cats lead LSU 14-3. LSU gets a 46-yard field goal from LaFleur with one tick left to end the first half of play. I'm sure that's somewhat of a momentum builder for LSU since they managed to move the ball downfield. Well, they had to come back after Kentucky went up 14-0 there with only about a minute left to go in the first half. Give the Tigers credit. They moved the ball down the field, took a chance there, ran that play with eight seconds left, had a sack, but they had a timeout, got the timeout with one second left, they got the field goal. That always gives you a lift when you go into the locker room getting points. There are positive things that have happened to both teams, actually, more so obviously to Kentucky. 
early second quarter. Kentucky has the football first and goal to go from the two-yard line of LSU. A 27-yard pass play from Jones to Chapman set Kentucky up there, but LSU kept them out of the end zone, and then they thought they might get another goal line stand, but Kentucky cracked it in there with Mo Williams to give the Cats that 14-0 lead. Oh, well, they did. I, I look back on that first win, Charlie. The Wildcats didn't get it in the end zone, but the defense came in and did its job. LSU was held at about the nine-yard line, did not get a first down. So you don't lose the field position, and that's what football is. It's a war over field position. Kentucky got the ball back, got a good punt return, and then got it down there that next time and got the first score of the game. And the Wildcats were not denied there on the second quarter. Kentucky leads LSU here at the half in Lexington, Kentucky, 14 to three as the Cats are trying for their third straight win, hoping to go four and two on the year and three and one on the Southeastern Conference. Back with more, we're at halftime in just a minute. to get involved. When parents help, just imagine how much a child can learn. And buy Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. And buy Super 6 Best Quality Ford Dealers. Childers Oil Company. First Commonwealth Bank. Toyota Dealers. The Kentucky Lottery. Frazier's Farmer Supply. Kentucky Power Company. Lee's Famous Recipe. Cypress Mountain Coals. And First National Bank of Corbin. We're about to begin the second half of play. Kentucky leading LSU 14 to three. Hello everybody, this is Charlie Mack Alexander and Rob Romley. Kentucky got on the board two times in the second period. Here's the first, a 25 yard strike from Jones to Terry Samuels, a tight end. Big tight end coming off the line over the middle. Has to turn around, pull his pass in. I hope Terry had to be excited about catching that one and getting his hands back on the football. Kentucky went on a 17-play, 79-yard drive, and this is a run that set it up. Freshman Mo Williams out of Columbus, Georgia. Now Matt Riazzi throwing a block downfield, but then right here, Torrey James just can't hang on to Mo Williams. I thought he was trying to strip the ball out of his hands there, and it really cost him. A couple of plays later, Williams took it in. Now here is the sixth interception of the season for Marcus Jenkins. Now Jamie Howard trying to hit his tight end Bishop and just simply overthrown. And another one for Marcus Jenkins. He now has six now, just three away from equaling the school record for a year. And Kentucky has 15 pass pickoffs on the year. Now let's take a look at the stats, Rob. Well, Kentucky so far with 198 total yards. LSU with 136. The Wildcats have 121 through the air. 77 by way of the ground. Pookie Jones is 9 of 12. He has not thrown an interception. Jamie Howard is 6 of 16 with one interception. Kentucky with 11 first downs. The Tigers with 8. You see the possession time there. But I know, Charlie, the thing that Bill Curry really has to be happy with, his team did not commit a turnover in the first half of this game. The Wildcats fumbled once, did not lose it. LSU had only one turnover, the interception that we saw there by Marcus Jenkins. But on a night like this, to have that kind of ball security, You've really, really got to be happy. Kentucky only had to punt one time, and Daniel Ariza hit a 46-yarder. LSU has had to, boot it, had to boot it away on three different occasions. Again, it is 14-3 Kentucky leading LSU as we're about to begin the second half of play. LSU, as we talked about during the break, helped their cause a little bit by being able to score just before the first half came to a close at 46-yard field goal by Andre Lafleur with one tick to go is when they snapped it back. Now let's take a look at the rest of Kentucky's games after this one. Well, the thing is, it's three straight on the road, Charlie, at Georgia, at Mississippi State down in Starkville, and then Vanderbilt in Nashville before coming back home to play the last two, East Carolina and Tennessee here at Commonwealth Stadium. Those will both be afternoon games. Those teams, though, have been struggling most of the year. Georgia with a big win over Vanderbilt today, but Georgia, Mississippi State, Vandy, and East Carolina have really, really had a tough time. Now let's go down to the playing surface to our colleague, Dick Gabriel. Dick? Thank you, Charlie Mack. The rain has stopped. Obviously, we're all still a little wet down here. Al Green with good news. They haven't even checked anybody tonight. It's been that kind of night for the Wildcats. No even minor injuries to talk about. And amazingly, this turf is in great shape right now. Let's see if it holds up for the second half. Back upstairs. It will be Kentucky getting its hands on the ball first to begin the second half. They won the coin toss to begin the game, deferred until the second half. Back deep to receive for the Kentucky Wildcats. 
It will be to the far side, number three, Randy Wyatt. And to the near side, it will be number 28, the freshman, Donnell Gordon. Normally, Alfonso Browning back deep along with Mark Chapman. But not the occasion tonight. Wildcats will get the ball to begin the second half here, Charlie. They'll also be moving into that wind, however, just as they were in the second period of this game. And they'll have the wind at their backs in the fourth quarter. It will be number 10, Matt Huracamp, the sophomore out of Shalimar, Florida, to kick off for the LSU Tigers. short on the run to field it Gordon takes it away from Wyatt skirts to his left drug down as he crosses the 25 gets it upfield of the 27 yard line a bit of confusion there as to who would take it I would think the upperclassman would take it but that was not the case the freshman took it away from the junior Alan Stansbury on the tackle now there comes Pookie Jones on the field now Charlie to begin the second half and uh, what a first two periods he had, completing 9 of 12. Pookie doing a great job throwing for 121 yards. You mentioned Kentucky not having a turnover in the first half. Two weeks ago here, they did not turn the ball over. That 21-0 win over Ole Miss. This is Jones to throw on first down. A wide open Terry Samuels across the middle. Breaks one tackle. Gains an extra yard or two upfield of the 36-yard line. Very close to a first down. And a Wildcat is shaken up back inside the 25-yard line, and Pookie Jones calls for a trainer. Terry Samuels quickly off the line and wide open over the middle, just standing there and waiting for it. Then he breaks the tackle of Calais. Unfortunately, though, he couldn't get too much more yardage out of it. Let's see if we can pick up now who the injured player is. It looks like Askin. Mark Askin, the junior out of Louisville. Who has been hurt most of the season, playing with nagging injuries. Looks like he's holding on to his left knee, but it's really hard to tell. It could be a multitude of things. And not only did we hear from uh, Dick Gabriel just a moment ago about the injury situation and how well it had been through the first two quarters here tonight. Come out on the first offensive play of the third period, and Askin is having trouble. Let's see if he can get up. In a measure uh, for a first down in the meantime, and it is a first and ten. Askin pretty much able to get off under his own power, so that's a good good sign right there. That is Kentucky's 12th first down tonight. But Askin will be replaced, uh, Rob, by Scott Crosley, the sophomore from sophomore from Carmel, Indiana. First down, Kentucky. Wants to throw off the play pick. Now scrambles to his right, got an open field to the 45 and steps out of bounds around the 48-yard line. Had to get to the 47 to pick up the first, and I think he just got it across the 47 for the first down. Hookie dropping back, looking to throw, nothing there. Sees some daylight here to the near side of the field. He's got a block there from Crosley, who just came into the game trying to get one from Terry Samuels downfield. Does a good job to scramble for good yardage. Just across the 47, first down Kentucky, first down number 13. Cats up 14 to three, early third period. Cats opening possession of the second half. It at wing back now is Riazzi replacing Browning. One receiver to the far side. Give it off to Williams, a tailback isolation. Cracks in there across the 50 into LSU territory to the 49. Mike Calli. Middle linebacker who's been a very busy youngster tonight makes the play for LSU defensively and here comes Aaron Purdy in the game at tackle as a hobbling Chris Page goes out. Yeah, big number 74 Chris Page trying to open the hole there got pushed back and there goes Chris off the field that doesn't look like it's anything too serious but he's going back to the bench and they'll take a look at it so we'll see. Second down and six ball in LSU territory at the Bayou Bengal 48 and a half. Jones cuts back, knocked down at the 45. We'll get about three. 
In the game now for Kentucky at wide receiver number 27, Clyde Rudolph. Rodney Young on the tackle that time for LSU. Rudolph hasn't played in a while, though he did have a big 33-yard catch a couple of games back, an over-the-shoulder job that was pretty sensational. Speaking of nagging injuries, he's had some. See the brace on that right knee. He'll mark it at the 45. Third down at about two. Pitches to Williams. Turns it on. First down and more. Breaks a tackle down the far sideline. Goes down at the 28-yard line. Oh, my, what a run. 17 yards. He is a tough, tough young man to bring down. Matt Riazzi leading the way here. And here comes Mo Williams right behind him. Riazzi actually missed his block, and Williams just fought his way right through it. Had a little trouble with his footing there along the sidelines. Wanted to get more yardage than he did, but that is still a good, good gain. And he is racking up some yardage on the ground. Has 77 rushing yards and, of course, scored a touchdown in the second quarter. Gives it off to the first man through, does Jones to Damon Hood, who gets it to the 25-yard line. Kentucky having very good success tonight. Rob on first down. Well, they are, and that is so, so very important. Just gives you an uh, abundance of possibilities as to what you can do on second down when you pick up that good yardage on first down, and the Wildcats have been able to do that repeatedly. Robert Thibodeau from his tackle spot makes the tackle on the last play for LSU. His older brother, Benji, played for LSU as a fine defensive tackle as well. Give it off to Mo Williams. Cuts back. Cuts outside. Boy, is this freshman something to watch. They'll mark him down at the 17-yard line, and it's first down Kentucky. Well, at halftime, Mo had 11 carries, 55 yards, and behind a good block by Barry Rich, he has really added to that here in the early stages of the second half. He could very well now be on his way to better than a 100-yard night. He's up to 85 right there. 14 carries, 85 yards for the freshman. Kentucky, first down and 10 from the Bayou Bengals, 17. Cats lead it 14-3. Give it off, first man through. That's Damon Hood with a big hole. Hood, touchdown! Damon Hood with his second rushing touchdown of the season. The junior from Bowling Green gives the Cats a 20-3 lead. is mixing up the plays nicely after you keep giving it to Williams then the quick hitter right up the middle to the fullback here Damon Hood good block in there by Scott Crosley who had to come in for Mark Askin on this series to clear the way and Kentucky is in the end zone again Lynn off out of Riazzi's hold is good Kentucky 21 LSU 3 the drive 73 yards 8 plays took 328 off the clock we'll be back to Lexington after you watch this Here's a gorgeous 17-yard touchdown run by Damon Hood, the fullback. And again, you see that block there by Scott Crosley opening the daylight, and Hood goes into the end zone just about untouched. Let's go down to Dick for an injury report. Chris Page is back. He was kicked in his right calf, and it was just a quick pain sort of thing. But Mark Askin is in serious trouble right now. He's on the golf cart. Dr. Mary Island checking the left knee. They have peeled the big braces and all the padding off of him. So right now, it doesn't look like he'll be back soon. We'll get a final word here in just a couple of minutes. Back upstairs. Twin safeties back for LSU to return the kickoff of Dan Thompson to the near side. Number 40, David Butler to the far side, Eddie Kennison. Kennison has been held in check tonight. Still, we've got some time to play, and he could break loose at any minute, but they've done a great job on him tonight. Kentucky defense seems to get better every ball game, and the offense is certainly doing its job. Here's Thompson's kick. Squibbed along the ground. Piggies, the up back, feels it at the 23, tries to get to the far side. Fighting off a block is Dante Key, who also makes the tackle at the 35. On the return, Gary Piggies. Number 87, Dante Key. Well, the Wildcats kicking into the wind, Charlie. They want to keep this ball on the ground rather than trying to get it up into the air. And, of course, you can give up some field position uh, this way. Piggy's trying to get a 
wall of blockers here in front of him. And Kennison there can't quite get the block on Dante Key, but it's up to the 35, and I'm sure LSU's happy with that. 11-16 remains in the third. Kentucky 21, LSU 3. Single set back. The pitch comes to Sharp. Sharp in trouble, knocked down. Will lose a yard, possibly two. Howard Carter, the first to get through from his defensive end position. Zane Bean also helped him out. Losses a yard. Now remember Howard Carter had to sit out the first game of the year because of that suspension, but I tell you, he has really come on as of late. Really playing well in Kentucky's defensive scheme. See Howard Stats throwing the football, picked off by Marcus Jenkins back in the first half. He's back to throw on first down. Swings it near side. Nice open field tackle there by Deuce Williams on number 32, Jermaine Williams, a senior from Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Now Deuce does exactly what he has to do. Jamie Howard straight back. And they swing it to the man coming out of the backfield. But Deuce is right there to play it. He holds his ground, keeps his footing, and puts the stick on the receiver. Good defensive stop. LSU only gets four out of it. Shotgun, Howard, pressure, steps up. He will run it to the near sideline. Slides out of bounds at the 44. And it will be fourth down at about three. Chased out by Deuce Williams. Let's go back down to Dick Gabriel for another injury update. Well, some sobering news. Uh, Mark Askin out for the rest of the game. Charlie Mack with a partially sprained left knee and also partially dislocated kneecap. So he will not be back tonight. You know, he spent so much time with his golf cart this season. They might want to name this after him. He's had a rough year. There's Bill Curry. LSU's got to hurry up to get this play off. They're not set up in punt formation. It is fourth and one. 9.55 to go in the third. They won't get it. Ball goes over as the give went to Williams. And Marty Moore met him dead in his tracks. LSU gambling in its own territory on fourth down and down 21-3. Now watch Zane B. we need to say something about the crowd here commonwealth seats 57,800 this is a lousy night but these folks are loving what these cats are doing and they have shown up here and shown their great support and the cats have responded with a very fine effort first and 10 from the lsu 45 jones out of the gun with good protection pats it fires it complete the hood put 35 hood 30 Written out just inside the 30-yard line. First down, Kentucky in a gain of about 16 yards. And Kentucky coming out and immediately going to the air out of the shotgun. Good protection. Aaron Purdy holding his man off there on the right side of your screen. And here's Damon Hood wide open. Another big, big gain on first down. Kentucky's down to the Tiger 30-yard line. There you see a shot of Aaron Purdy. Left defensive tackle set up to pass protect probably out of the gun beside jones it is hood who caught that last pass three receivers now four out in the pattern jones has to scramble fires it and not being able to hang on is alfonso pounding at the lsu 20 and it's second down and 10. now that time pookie saw robert deschatel the linebacker coming through and blitzing and he had to get rid of that one in a hurry that was all there was to it because deschatel really had the heat on him of Kentucky's first downs, and they have 17, six they've gotten on first down, six on second down, four on third down, and one on fourth down. Second down, 10. It's off Pookie Jones' shoulder pads, and he fights it away to keep possession. That ball was really snapped back there. James Gilliard almost had a fumble recovery, which would have been Kentucky's first turnover of the night. 
It did not happen. That ball was really fired back there. I think Pookie had looked away and it hit him off the shoulder pad, Rock. It looked like that. It very, very alertly, though, he was able to fall on it. There have not been many bad exchanges out of this shotgun all season long for the Wildcats. Wesley Jackson and Pookie have really, really done a nice job. Chapman, Wyatt, and Browning are the wideouts. Jones with time across the middle, in and out of hands of Samuels. Oh, he had a lot of stripes in front of him. He's got to be kicking himself in the pants for missing that one. So it's fourth down. Daniel Ariza, who has kicked it once tonight, back in the first half, a 46-yarder, will punt for only the first time here in the second half with 8.34 remaining in the third in single safety is Eddie Kennison. Scoops it up off the ground. Kicks it off the side of his foot. This one may be okay. It is. like a pool shot goes out of the eight time out on the field kentucky leads lsu in the third with 8 25 to go 21 to 3 we'll be right back Eight twenty-five to go in the third lsu has it after the kentucky punt and here's a big hole for sharp as he gets the first down across the lsu 20 to about the 22 yard line the tackle for Kentucky by the strong safety Marcus Jenkins and the free safety Stephen Hall. Well, Kentucky's defense wanted to keep the Tigers penned in. They get Robert Stinson turned around here and get a huge hole. And the Tigers get themselves some breathing room on first down up over the 20. Howard gives it off. It is sharp again as his feet cut out from under him after he gets a yard. Williams on the stop. Deuce Williams on the tackle for Mark Kentucky. Williams. We talked in the beginning of the broadcast, Rob, about how dangerous Eddie Kennison, number two there, fabulous okay. wide receiver was. Well, he's done very little tonight. Two games ago, he had 195 yards receiving against Utah State in the Bayou Bengals win in Baton Rouge, and in that game had a 74-yard catch for a touchdown. But again, he has been held in check tonight so far. So far, so good. Second down, 10. Give us off to Sharp again. Loses the football. Recovered by Kentucky at the 24-yard line. I think they just took it away from him, Rob. Meaning Deuce Williams just took it away from him. There was a big hole there. Well, it looked like Sharp was going to run forever. Let's see if we can tell what happens as he loses the handle here. He's got it. Somebody reaches in there and strips it out. Is that Zane Bean? I think it was Zane. 59. And very alertly, the Wildcats are on the ball. It was Zane Bean who stripped that ball out. And LSU has lost a fumble now for the first time tonight. That is their second turnover. First and 10, Kentucky. Jones will keep it. Got Rich in front of him. That pitches back to Williams. Williams cuts back. Inside the five, he goes down. Good looking play. Ricardo Washington keeps Williams out of the end zone. Oh, what a well winner again. What a well-conceived play this is. Pookie running all the way. Barry Rich pulls out. He's leading the interference there. And then Pookie pitching back to Mo Williams. Didn't quite get a block there on Anthony Marshall, but still Mo was able to get through and take it down inside the five-yard line. He's over 100 yards now. 21 carries unofficially. 106 yards. His season's high. 109 yards rushing against Florida. First down and goal to go from the three of LSU. It'll be given to Damon Hood, who spins across. They say, no, his knee went down. Looked as though he took it across to me, Rob. I'd like to see that one again. Get a look at it here. As Kentucky's offensive front fires out, and here comes Damon as he is hit before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, good call. Good call it is, because he was down before that ball made it over the plane of the goal line. Still just a little bit of real estate to cover. 21-3 Kentucky threatening to pour on more. Second down goal to go from the one-yard line. Jones over right guard. Touchdown. Pookie Jones 
with his third rushing touchdown on the year. And some words now exchanged from the very mild manner Pookie Jones and some of the LSU defenders. They break it up quickly. But Kentucky is in the end zone again. Wesley Jackson with the snap and Pookie going right behind him at that right side of that offensive front and he breaks the plane easily and it's 27 to three. Three plays, a minute eight off the clock and 26 yards is covered with a one yard sneak by Jones to point after Yuha Leonoff out of Riazzi's hold and it's good. With 6.08 to go in the third, Kentucky up on LSU now 28 to three. We'll be back to Commonwealth in just a minute. Be sure to join us on November 13th for Kentucky football action when East Carolina comes to town to take on the Cats. We'll have all the action right here on the Kentucky Football Television Network. Be sure to check your local listings for time and station. And who knows, we may even have a game, Rob, before then. We'll have to wait and see. Just have to see how things work out. Look at this big crowd that has hung around here in the rain tonight. And right now they are enjoying a 28-3 lead. And I know Bill Curry has to be happy, Charlie, after his team did not take advantage when LSU turned the ball over on downs. After the fumble, they capitalize and get some more points on the board. Thompson's kick once again along the ground. Fielded. And run up field. Crossing the 35 to the 36 is Ryan Huffman, the former quarterback, who is now a free safety. Noose on the tackle on the kick return by Huffman. Still a long ways to go. Six minutes and three seconds left in this third period. But Kentucky fans have got to be feeling awfully good about it at this stage. Now a 25-point lead. You know, you look at this LSU football team and you see all the talent they have, but they just can't get it together. A lot of good young talent, Charlie. Slot to the far side, Howard. Slips and falls, may have stepped on one of his linemen coming back. That's been the kind of year LSU has had. That play kind of sums it up, Rob. That really does, and you, you see, see the, the frustration. frustration on the face of Jamie Howard, the sophomore quarterback. Pick number 68 there kind of steps over on him. That's Ben Bordellen, freshman guard. Second down and 13, slot to the near side this time for LSU. Howard, got a man wide open out in the flat. It is complete, and Adrian Sherwood makes the tackle at the 37-yard line. Kevin Franklin on the reception for LSU. Melvin Johnson there with that cast on his right forearm. The Kentucky defense playing with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of spirit. Pass completed on the near side, but very, very quickly. Adrian Sherwood is there. Deuce Williams is there. And there comes hard-hitting Melvin Johnson into the picture. LSU now looking at third down and nine. Good look at Melvin Johnson, that big cast on his arm. It's light, though. It's not as heavy as it looks. Howard with time. Bullet across the middle and caught. At the Kentucky 43-yard line by number 87, Brett Besh. And there's a penalty marker down. And a fine catch by Brett Besh, the junior split end, who was a walk-on and was put on scholarship during two days, the fourth walk-on to gain a scholarship under Curly Hallman in his third year now at LSU. That's an 18-yard gain. The face mask penalty, another look at it. Howard setting up in the pocket. Look at this catch here by Besh, and right there, the face mask is Look at Melvin Johnson pulled. in pain there, but pops right up. Don't know whether it was the right forearm that he broke or whether it was a knee as he got caught underneath the collision. First down and 10. For the Wildcat 39, LSU trailing Kentucky 28-3 as Howard back pedals to throw. In trouble, right up the middle. And he goes down at the 22 and gets a first down. He'll get 
About 18 yards on the play. Call it 17. There's a shot of Curly Hallman, the former Southern Mississippi head coach. One of the biggest offensive plays the Tigers have had all night. Howard had a 19-yard scramble in the first half, and here he goes. Good athlete. Everybody covered, saw the opening up the middle, took advantage of it, and LSU is driven now deep into Kentucky territory. 357 and counting. LSU's tight end on the left side will jump, and that is Harold Bishop, the senior out of Tuscaloosa. So they'll backpedal five on the penalty. How frustrating that is after a big first and ten. Come up to start the next series, and you get a penalty. Kentucky now with a new defensive front in there. Tanner just going out at right defensive end, replaced by Dante Key. Billy Lofton in at the tackle. Roger Sullivan and Mike Schlegel, who is from Harahan, Louisiana. He's number 97. He's to the far side. John Collins will stay in there at one tackle. Matt Noose is in at linebacker. First down and 15 now. Howard. Chased. Fires on the run. In and out of the hands of Deuce Williams along the far side. And almost another interception for the Kentucky secondary as Deuce Williams does a juggling act here over at the far side of the field. Good protection for Howard. Still looking for a receiver. That's Schlegel in pursuit. And Williams goes up for the ball, and you know in his heart Deuce is feeling right now, I should have had it. He already has one pass interception this year. 3.31 to go in the third. Scott Ray will come to the near side, and Bishop just kind of strolls off the field. Got off in plenty of time, though. Eye backs for Howard. Three receivers out in the pattern, now four. Howard will run it to the 20-yard line, and it will be third down and about six. Caught from behind by Billy Lofton, the big guy. Ran him down from behind. Howard is such an impressive-looking young athlete. Well, Howard has everybody covered here. Good pursuit by Zane Bean. Bean is blocked out of the play by Williams. Watch the pursuit here as he comes in and keeps going and gets him low right there. Good pursuit by Zane. End of the game for LSU, number 21, Kevin Franklin. At Flanker, Ray goes far side. Kennison comes near side, along with Besh. And over as the flanker, or wing on the right side, is Franklin as Howard looks to throw. Guns it, man open, Kennison, touchdown LSU. Kennison with his second touchdown catch of the year. And it's now 28-9, Kentucky. Well, the Tigers, after falling down by 25 points, fight back. Give them some credit. Kennison has not hurt the Wildcats so far tonight, but he does right here as he comes open over the middle. Howard with good time, and the pass is right on the money. Just in front of Marcus Jenkins, and LSU has its first touchdown of the night. The floor's kick is good. And with 2.40 to go in the third period, it is Kentucky 28 and LSU 10. Again, a reminder to join us tomorrow and every Sunday for the Bill Curry Show with my partner, Rob Romley, Ralph Hacker, and Coach Bill Curry. Check your local listings for time and station. Highlights of tonight's game against LSU, and then a look ahead to next week to play the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens. There's Mike Archer over on the far sidelines, giving his defense a talking to. Kentucky had some younger players in on that last series, and... Uh, well, Jamie Howard, the play I remember, Charlie, was that scramble a moment ago. Really picked up good yardage, 18 yards. Then the touchdown pass to Kennison. That young man right there is Nate Miller, the junior defensive tackle out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Knee injury early on in the ball game, and will not see, obviously, any more action here tonight and may not see any more this season. Just have to wait and see. Donnell Gordon back along with Randy Wyatt. Expecting possibly a short kick. With 2.40 to go in the third period. Kentucky, 28 LSU 10. And Gordon and Wyatt stand at the five. And the good hands folks are in there across the front line for Kentucky. They'll go ahead and kick it. Angle it toward Gordon at the 
seven yard line. Gordon up across the 25 to about the 28. Return of 22 yards. Tackle was made by David Butler. Take another look at this. Donnell Gordon hauls it in. Starts down the right side, then breaks it in. Gets behind a, a block there. And trying to pick up a block from Raymond McLaurin. And does a good job to bring it back 22 yards. Freshman tailback out of Oldham County. Flash Gordon scored 62 touchdowns in his high school career. Here's Jones with time, fires it, Whoa, Williams goes down and picks up eight yards. Another good gain on first down. Mo Williams open over at the far side. And Pookie Jones continuing to have a fine night throwing the football as Matt Riazzi comes into Kentucky's offensive backfield along with Damon Hood there and the freshman Mo Williams. They line up in the stack eye. Pookie is 12 of 16 for 153 yards and a touchdown back in the first half to Terry Samuels, a tight end. Second down short. The give to Williams over the right side. He won't get there this time. They were looking for him and they sling him back. Probably is going to lose about a yard and a half on the play. Corey White on the tackle for LSU. Corey White comes in, shuts this off immediately. The senior out of Shreveport, just nothing at all. As he fights his way through a blocker and uh, puts the wraps on Mo Williams. So now it'll be third down and three as the ball is positioned at the Wildcat 36 yard line. Matt Riazzi will be the flanker to the near side. It will be Wyatt and Chapman to the far side as Jones works out of the gun with Hood beside him. Plenty of time. Under throws Hood, who was open across the 40 at the 41-yard line, and Kentucky will punt the ball away. And Kennison will drop back in single safety. And an encouraged Curly Holman. Down on the Louisiana State sidelines after his offense took it down the field, got its first touchdown. His defense comes out and holds, and things looking up a little bit here for the Tigers right on the closing stages of the third quarter. Kennison broke loose a moment ago to catch a 20-yard touchdown pass from Jamie Howard. He had been very quiet until that time. He can scare you to death when he gets his hands on a punt or a kick as well. Ten-man rush for LSU. Coming after Ariza, he gets it away. Kennison will try and chase it down inside the 25. Breaks one tackle. Jitterbugs to the 30 near sideline. Ariza may have a last crack at him. Penalty marker down. Now McLaurin's going to try to chase him down. McLaurin gets him. And around the 10-yard line, there's a penalty marker back at the 31 of LSU. LSU may have been called for an illegal block. And that's what I was talking about in regard to Kennison. He can break free at any time. And the flags just went flying all over the field. Great job by Eddie Kennison. I think it was Gary Piggy's number 11 who may have thrown that illegal block or clip. And that's frustrating for the Tigers, Charlie, because I don't think... Yeah, the, the block appeared to me to be so thrown so far behind the play that I don't think it would have had any effect on on the return. I think Kennison already had the Kentucky defense beat, but it calls this play back. That's a play that would have got LSU back in the game. Kennison retreated, did a good job to pick the ball up. That's a close one, Rob. And right there, right there. Uh, if it's on Pegues, it was back earlier. I thought it was back farther. I didn't think it was along the sidelines from where the yeah. flags were flying. But it is clipping against LSU, and it's a big, big penalty. And a good break there for Kentucky, obviously. Tigers could have had the ball down around the Kentucky 10-yard line, trailing by 18 points, and would have been right back in this game. Well, they've got it back at their own 16. In years past, that kind of play would have happened to Kentucky. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> or certainly over the last two or three, but Bill Curry has gotten things together here at Kentucky, and this is becoming a very solid football team. And when you are better, you seem to get breaks. Across the middle, stripped away. Ball on the ground, recovered by Deuce Williams. It is Kentucky's football. 
Big tight end, David LaFleur, could not hang on to it. It was stripped away, and Deuce Williams has a fumble recovery. And all of a sudden, after the penalty, the roof simply falls in on the Tigers. As the tight end is stripped here, quick pass over the middle. Now that looks like Marty Moore is the guy who strips it out of his hands, and Deuce Williams very alertly falling on the football, and Kentucky's in business down at the Tiger 23. Kentucky up 28 to 10 with 38 seconds left in the third and with the football Jones hit in the backfield dives back to the line of scrimmage and may manage a yard out of it second and nine we'll call it Kentucky scores two of them came back in the first half both in the second period a 25 yard pass play Jones to Samuels and a one yard run by Mo Williams here in the second half, Damon Hood on a 17-yard touchdown run, and Pookie Jones on a quarterback sneak. LSU has scored on a field goal back in the first half, a 46-yarder by LaFleur, Andre LaFleur, and a touchdown pass of 20 yards from Jamie Howard to Kennison. Final play of the quarter, and it's batted away, almost intercepted, at the LSU 15-yard line by Robert Deschotel. That is the end of the third. Kentucky on top of LSU, 28 to 10. Back with the final 15 minutes after this. We're set for the final period of play as the team swap ends of the field. Kentucky will have it. The ball spotted down inside the LSU. 25-yard line at the 23. It'll be third down and a long nine. Kentucky will work out of the shotgun. Chris Page in the game at left tackle number 74. Calvert the receiver to the near side. Samuels and Browning to the far side. Wyatt and Hood near Jones. Here's a pitch out to Wyatt. Wyatt turns on the afterburners and crosses the 15. Looks like he's got the first down inside the 14. Boy, did he turn it on when he cut back. Now, James Gilliard, number seven, the sophomore defensive end out of Shreveport. He, Randy White just runs away from him, turns on the speed, and turns it into a big play for the Kentucky offense. It's going to be short, fourth down and less than a yard. Kentucky will go for it. Riazzi and Williams into the game as Wyatt and Browning check out. Kentucky's offense, 37 rushes for 169 yards, 18 passes complete for 153. We remind you this copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience in a reproduction or other use of this program without the written consent of the University of Kentucky and sports communications in Lexington is strictly prohibited. Ball just inside the 15 of LSU, fourth down at about a yard. Kentucky up 28-10 with 14-21 remaining. Calvert, lone receiver to the near side. Jones gives it off to Hood. First down down to the 10-yard line. And I think Hood thought he should have scored. Just could not keep his feet. Good blocks by Scott Crosley and Terry Samuels here. Crosley 60 clearing the way. And Damon going right behind him. Good hole. First down, Kentucky. Ball is marked at the 11-yard line. First down, 10 Wildcats. Slot to the near side with Mo Williams in the slot next to Calvert. Jones fires it, got Samuels open, breaks the tackle. Spins off another one inside the five, down to the three. Great second and third effort by Terry Samuels, a senior out of Louisville. And is Terry Samuels having a big night or what? Boogie Jones out of the shotgun, gets rid of the ball very quickly. Samuels off the line, wide open. You see the big man break one tackle and then just battle. And he's awfully tough to bring down. 6'2", 253. You see his numbers tonight, four catches for 51 yards and a touchdown. Back 
back in the first half of 25 yards. Second down and just over two. Up the middle of Hood near the goal line. Kept away from six by Robert Deschotel. It is first down, obviously. Kept away from the goal line. First down, goal to go. Had to get it inside the two to pick up the first. Raymond McLaurin replaces Alfonso Browning. McLaurin, the redshirt freshman out of Radcliffe, Kentucky, will work as a wing back. That is 18 first downs for Kentucky. Calvert, lone receiver out to the near side. First down, goal to go from the LSU one. The give is to Hood, and he's in there. Damon Hood with his second touchdown of the night, his third of the season, and his 34 to 10 catch. Wild catch, that is. Kentucky with a big offensive showing here tonight in this game. Get a look at it from ground level as Pukey just gives it to the big man, Damon Hood. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. And his strength just carries him to the goal line. Laying off's point after out of Riazzi's hole. It's there. And it looked like they had a little trouble getting the hole down on that one, but Matt Riazzi did it, and it worked. Cats up by 25. We'll be back to Lexington in just a minute. And the Wildcats pretty busy, isn't he, Dick? Yeah, Charlie Mack, but this is the only individual who's really not happy about all the scoring. Greg Snyder is a student inside the Wildcat mascot suit. He is battling pneumonia, and these push-ups, Thielen Williamson tells me, are killing his kid. He said take it easy on him because he's really sick, but he's really having a good time. Can you say double pneumonia now? He has pneumonia right now. Oh, my goodness. Maybe this will make him well. Let's hope so. Talk about a real competitor. That cat certainly is in that physical state. Kentucky has scored in every period except the opening period. Two touchdowns in the second, two in the third, and now one in the fourth. Kick is away. Fielded by the up back at the 20. That is Pegues, who has been very busy tonight. He'll get it to the 34, where he goes down in the blue pile. Still a long ways to go in this football game, Charlie. We've got 12 minutes and 18 seconds on the clock. Danny Howard remains the LSU quarterback as you look at the Kentucky sidelines. But the Wildcats right now with a very, very comfortable 25-point advantage. Jamie Howard, who has gone all the way at quarterback. We have not seen Chad Luke tonight, who normally plays the senior out of Baton Rouge. Give it off to the tailback, Robert Davis. Goes down right at the line of scrimmage. May have gotten a half yard. Not much more. Marty Moore on the tackle. Stinson and Moore on the tackle. Didn't look as though Davis really was ever to get, able to get his footing up under him. Field continues now to get chewed up more and more as this game wears along. It's been a wet, damp night. The field really taking a beating here, but it's held up pretty well. 11.46 to play. Kentucky 35, LSU 10. LSU looking at second and nine. Howard fires a bullet, completed the 49 to Ray, and he crosses over into Wildcat territory, gets it to the 48. Ray wide open over the middle. And Howard just drills it right in there. This fellow's got a strong right arm, that's for sure. And he puts this one right on the spot. An 18-yard gain. Stephen Hall makes the tackle. Got some help as well. First down, LSU. Single set back behind Howard as he drops to throw and guns it incomplete. Two receivers right in the same area, not three yards from each other. Intended for the tight end LaFleur, David LaFleur. Kennison was right there beside him. Snyder is there to break it up. 
Right now, Charlie, the Wildcats with their biggest offensive showing since the Mississippi State game here last year in which they scored 36 in a losing effort. 35 points up on the board. Cats equal their high score of the year. They open the season with a 35-0 shutout of Kent State. Second down 10. There's a play fake. Howard running for his life away from Bean. Fires on the run. Way underthrown near Kennison, and Cannon was covered. It is third down. Kentucky's defense has played well in all areas. Defensive ends, I think, have really taken a big step since Mike Archer's come along. Everyone has, obviously, Rob, but the defensive ends, they can all run, very athletic. I think it really helped this defense position where Kentucky has a lot of depth some experience some veteran experience also some good young talent that's being brought along from the 49 of Kentucky third down and 10 and a sack. getting the sack Howard Carter I think was the second man to hit him and I'm not sure who the first was could it have been Stinson let's take a look maybe Sullivan there's Zane Bean coming in here from the near side. Carter pursuing oh, the play Carter from behind, and it is Howard Carter all the way. Big that's number Carter 53. Holstein to kick. Riazzi to field it. Set up at the Wildcat 10. Riazzi with room to field it. Takes it in at the 12. Straight up the middle. Riazzi almost pushed it. Gets it out to the 25. 10.21 to go, Kentucky 35, LSU 10. We'll be back to Lexington after you watch this. Give that youngster just any kind of daylight, he can burn you. Robert Thibodeau on the tackle for LSU. Donnie Red out of Danville has got the speed. He did a good job that time to reach back, pull in that pass, and then make about two yards out of the play. Second down eight. Jones has gone all the way at quarterback. Steps up. Now dumps it off incomplete. Thrown low for the tight end Corey Reeves at the 35. It is third down. Jones has really had a good day throwing the football, a good night, as well as running the football. He took a real pop here, Rob. He really did, setting up, trying to find the open receiver, Corey Reeves, there over the middle, and he gets popped here hard on his left shoulder. 54, Corey White, senior defensive end, got him. Antonio O'Farrell, the sophomore, will take his place. O'Farrell got the start at South Carolina when Jones was injured and played well, played extremely well in leading the Cats to that win over the Gamecocks. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. Gabe Northern almost picked it off. Fourth down, and Kentucky will kick. Now, Northern just went up in the air and was almost all over that ball. That would have been a heck of a defensive play. So, Farrell in for just the one snap, and it's a punting situation now for a reason. Rees has really done a good job. This is only his second game to kick as a collegian. Junior out of Miami, averaging 45 and a half yards a kick with a long of 49. Kick is short, not a good one, fielded down at the Kentucky 49. Only a 22-yard kick. Remember the big blue line on radio. You can hear it statewide. You can hear it every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time with Coach Bill Curry and the voice of the Cats, Ralph Hacker. Chad Loop will be in at quarterback for LSU, seeing his first action, the senior out of Baton Rouge. Three-time SEC academic honor roll student, number 16. And there's a fellow, Charlie, who's thrown for over 2,600 yards in his career. From the 49 of Kentucky, first and 10. Loop swings it out short, away from Robert Davis. Loop in 1990 threw two touchdown passes against Kentucky. In 1991, had a big night, 20 of 34, and threw the touchdown uh, winning pass. Let's go down to Dick Gabriel now. Charlie Mack, Pookie Jones is in some pain. This is why we saw Farrell come in on third down. Uh, Mary Ireland is working on him, and he's in some serious pain right now. He might have had a uh, 
a sort of hyperextension on his left elbow. At least it's not a throwing arm. Back upstairs. He really took a hit, and we got a real good look at that on the replay. Second down, 10, LSU. 9-17 remains. One set back behind Luke. Got a man wide open, far side. Horse collared out of bounds around the 42-yard line by Keel Wilson. Kevin Franklin caught it. Now we're seeing some uh, younger players now into the lineup for LSU. Kentucky not able to get any pressure here. And Luke delivers it over to the sidelines. Keo Wilson coming up to yank him out of bounds. Shy of a first down by about three yards. Luke's stats this year, not very impressive, though. As you mentioned, through his career, he's really thrown up some numbers. Third down, about four. Luke. Got a man open, overthrows him, and a penalty marker is down at the 30-yard line. Pass intended. Thrown around the free safety, Stephen Hall and Brett Besh, number 87. Don't know whether he was throwing it at them or throwing it up around the ball, the penalty marker, that is. The officials talk it over. LSU leads this series 31 to 11. There's been just one tie as we hear the call from referee Dick Burleson. Offensive pass interference against LSU. And apparently, Charlie, I think you're right. That was a call on Brett Besh downfield. No loss of down. Let's go back to Dick and check in again on Pookie Jones' condition. Well, the final word is he has a bruised elbow, Charlie Mack. They will x-ray him after the game. They have an ice pack taped to his elbow, so for now, he's done. If things get tight, he'll go back in, but for now, he's through for the night. Back upstairs. Thank you, Dick. It is now third down and 18. LSU has it at their own 42 and a half. Slot is to the near side. Loop on third down. At the Wildcat 35 yard line. It's a gain of 23. Jenkins on the tackle. There you see why Loop rang up those outstanding numbers at LSU. Now the Tigers convert here for the first and 10. Nice catch by Franklin. Has to hold up just a little bit to take in the pass just in front of Marcus Jenkins, who applies the hit, but it's first and 10 LSU at the 35. LSU has scored in the second and in the third quarter. Field goal in the second, touchdown in the third. Play fake by Luke. Scrambles right, caught. Fires as he's going down, throws it complete. And Schlegel, who is a Louisiana native, can't bring down Luke for the sack, and the pass is complete on an outstanding effort by Luke. Yeah, it really is. Mike Schlegel should have been able to haul him to the turf here, but he just can't do it. He's got a hold of him. Luke pumps once, almost goes down, holds his footing on the wet turf, delivers it as he's going down, and a good catch down along the sidelines. By Robert Davis, the ball is inside the 28th of Kentucky, second down and three. Back to the eye. There's another play fake. There's Bean coming after him. Can't get to him. Pass thrown long. Incomplete. Willie Cannon had a shot at picking it off. Loop was trying to go to Kennison. Third down and three. Let's go back to the 91 game here, Rob, with Chad Loop. Mentioned earlier his numbers in that game. 20 of 34 for 257 yards and a game-winning touchdown pass. And that was just with a couple of seconds left, was it not? Well, that's right. Uh, a frustrating night, or afternoon, I should say, for Bill Curry and the Wildcats as they let one slip away against the Tigers a couple of years ago. This one will not slip away. 7.48 left, and Kentucky leads LSU by 25 big ones. Luke, across the middle of the tight end, LaFleur. LaFleur dropped down at the 25. He'll have the first down. Needed three, got four. Moore and Snarden combined on the tackle for Kentucky. David LaFleur had four catches against Florida for 28 yards. His first receptions last week. And he grabs this one just in front of Marty Moore. And then the blue shirts converge on him. Tigers not giving up. They continue to move the ball downfield, trailing by 25 points here midway through the fourth quarter. 
Good look at LaFleur, great looking youngster, red shirt freshman, 6'6", 260, a USA Today first team high school All-American. the snap. Billy Lofton trying to force his way in there, but it's right blitzing from the outside, and there just isn't anything that Chad Luke can do. Well, I understand Pookie Jones has gone to the UK locker room. From the 33-yard line, second down and 18 for LSU. Kentucky will not come with a blitz. Loop will go back to throw and fire it. Broken up by Willie Cannon as he cut in front of Brett Bench. Willie Cannon with a pass breakup. And LSU looks at third and 18 now. That time, Chad Loop throwing into pretty good coverage here at the near side of the field. And watch this effort by Willie Cannon. Jim Brown couldn't quite deflect the pass at the line of scrimmage. And here's Cannon coming in at the last moment to knock it away with his left hand. Good play. There's Willie Cannon, the youngster out of Miami, Florida, former walk-on. Here come the Cats after Luke. Throws it across the middle from the floor, broken up by Marty Moore. Fourth down, 6-18 left to go now. Would have been another one for the senior linebacker. What would that have been, number three for Marty this year? It would have been number three. Cats came into this game ranked number four in the NCAA in pass efficiency defense. There you see why. LSU obviously will go for it with nothing to lose on fourth down and hoping to gain something, some respectability. Luke throws it long, got his man open down there out of bounds inside the three great catch by scott ray and a super throw by chad luke good execution we get a look at it from our end zone camera luke sees ray all the way and lost this pass down the sidelines and it is right on the mark a 30-yard pass play stephen hall on the coverage don robinson trailing the play it was right there and a big big game for the tigers LSU first down, goal to go from the three-yard line of Kentucky. Loop will give it off to his tailback, Davis, who is met by Matt Noose and knocked down around the two. Noose, a sophomore to Bellport, New York. Real pop there on the freshman, on the sophomore Davis. Well, the Kentucky defense has got a lot of pride. You can count on that. They would hate to give up another touchdown here in the last six minutes of this game, but well, they might unless they can hang on right now. 35-10, Kentucky with a comfortable lead. Second down, goal to go from the Kentucky two. Two tight ends, wing set left. Pitch goes to Williams, and he is in for the touchdown. Make that Robert Toomer. Robert Toomer, the sophomore from Sylvester, Georgia. Toomer, a highly recruited player. He's actually LSU's leading scorer last year as a freshman. He scored 32 points. They pitch it to him. Get a good block out there by LaFleur. David LaFleur, the tight end, and clear the way into the end zone for him. And LSU now has got 16 points. Point after coming from Andre LaFleur, who has not missed in six tries this season. And now he's perfect on seven. 5.31 left to go. It is Kentucky 35 and LSU 17. Well, when you're not listening or watching the Cats, the best way to keep up with all the Wildcat news is with the Cats Paws, a real tradition here in the Commonwealth. Get a one-year subscription. That's 35 issues for just $39.50. Order today by writing the Cats Paws at 2691 Regency Road, Lexington. The zip is 40503, or you may call area code 606-278-3474. A lot of folks have stayed here to witness this ball game, and some now headed to their vehicles to get dry and get warm. Really have to admire those who stuck it out here tonight. 
there's a look at the Kentucky band across the way to our right. Whooping things up in the last five and a half minutes or so. We've got 5.31 on the clock. The rain has let up for most of the second half. It rained hard here throughout most of the first half of this football game. And a wet, damp night. But it is going to be another big winning night for the Kentucky Wildcats. 35-17, Kentucky. Mention, of course, that the Cats go down to Athens, Georgia, to Bill Curry's home state, to take on the Bulldogs next Saturday afternoon. And the LSU Fighting Tigers will host Ole Miss, their arch rival, on October 30th. Ole Miss won today 19 to nothing over Arkansas Jackson. I beg your pardon, that will be in a couple of weeks after an open date. Kick out of bounds. Of course, Ole Miss will entertain Alabama this coming Saturday in Oxford, Mississippi, the first time in history that that has happened. Yeah, what a big game that'll be as far as the Western Division race in the Southeastern Conference is concerned. Wildcats are going to be content to take the ball right where it is as the kickoff. Onside kick by the Tigers went out of bounds. And Kentucky will get outstanding field position here in the last five and a half minutes of the game. Curly Hallman will call over his defense and then say something to one of the officials. As play is being held up momentarily, we've got 5.31 to go. And you see the numbers there. Kentucky with 35 points. LSU yeah. with 17. To re-kick that. Now, what did it not do? Did it not go the necessary yards? Now, the referee had not blown the ball in play they when they went ahead and, and when they went single. ahead and kicked off. Yeah. Never saw that before. Bill Got Curry, 17. You wouldn't think he'd be that anxious. Bill Curry, a to little flabbergasted away. by the whole thing, as he gets it explained to him, and I think that's Ray Dore getting a getting a word in there. The officials, all league officials, the referee Dick Burleson, umpire Butch Lambert, linesman Tim Abel, line judges James Bing Sr., side judge Lynn Harrington. The field judge tonight's been William W. Stanton and the back judge Stan Murray. And we'll see how he's laid the ball off the tee there to squib it along the ground. Onside kick, cats with the good hands people up there, only one man back deep, that's Chapman. LSU gets the ball, bounce right to him. And, of course, it's got to go the required distance for that to be a legal kick. Did it go 10 yards? Now, wait a minute. Let's see what they I don't say know here. Did. Looked like it went about eight or nine. And the referee indicating it was Kentucky ball, I thought. Yes. We're going this way, fellas. So it really doesn't matter. Kentucky has it. Take another look at this. As it does not quite appear to go the necessary yardage before the LSU player comes in that's, and grabs the football. That's what it is. Didn't go far enough. And Kentucky's got it in Tiger territory. Michael Woodfork in there at fullback. The wing back, McLaurin. And the deep back is Donnell Gordon. Wide receiver near side is Troy Hobbs. On a first down call to give us off to the tailback. Gordon the squirts through. Inside the 40 to the 39, he'll get six. Tackle by Corey White and Mike Calli. On the stop number 54, Corey White. Well, we've seen a big 100 plus yard night by the freshman Mo Williams. Let's see what young man from South Oldham can do, Donnell Gordon. His stats on the season, he's carried for 55 yards. Still five minutes to go in this game. O'Farrell, the quarterback, comes down the line on the option. Going to keep it, turn back against the grain and get it to the 35. He'd be a yard short of a first down. Tackle by Gabe Northern, the middle linebacker. Bill Curry in a discussion on the far side. Some of his players always teaching, and that's what you must do. This, of course, 
Charlie, the first we've seen Antonio O'Farrell in action here tonight since uh, that South Carolina performance a few weeks back in Columbia. What a job he did that evening. Out Third down and one. Outstanding execution of the option. And Bill Curry certainly has to feel good about having a guy like this that he can turn to. Jay Suma Sims is the receiver to the far side. The only receiver on third and one. Give is up the middle, and that's Woodfork for the first down. Gets it to the 32. Michael Woodfork, 6'1", 208 pounder, out of Paducah. Has two touchdowns on the year. Caught a touchdown pass at Indiana and scored against South Carolina on a touchdown run from short range. Troy Hobbs now coming into the Kentucky lineup, number 22. And limping out, number 74, Chris Page for Kentucky. First down, Wildcats. Cats about to go on the road for three in a row before finishing with the last two here at home. Counter play, McLaurin, LSU looking for it. McLaurin coughs it up as he's going down. They think they rule him down, yes. At the 31, so he actually got about two yards out of it. And it was number, number 97, William Crowell, the right side defensive tackle who came in to close off that play in a hurry. Clock running now with 3-11 left to go. And the Wildcats most content to let it run with a 35-17 lead. I guarantee one of those running backs would like to pop it through there. <laughs> See if they catch LSU's guard down. Second down, eight. Should be enough for the first down. Fine execution by Antonio O'Farrell, as we'll see it again here. Ryan Huffman was the man who came up to make the stop, but here's O'Farrell executing the option, the pitch to Donnell. And the young guy gets outside, eludes the tackler, and picks up the necessary yardage. Ball marked at the 22 of LSU. Hobbs comes to the near side. 2.27 left. Cats have this one sewn up. Offense would really like another score, though. Here's a counter play. Raymond McLaurin breaks the tackle, tries to get to the corner, does. Gets a first down. Ridden out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Well, we hadn't, chased him out. we hadn't seen the counter very much here tonight, but we see it right here in the latter stages of the game. McLaurin taking off in the opposite direction and breaks it to the outside. And another Kentucky first down as the ball is not out of the LSU 10-yard line. 2.13 to play. Cats offense trying to punch in. The most points they would have scored on the year if they can get it in. Give it off to the first man through for a yard. To the nine. Woodfork, got it. This has got to make uh, the UK coaching staff, I think, feel very good, not just by the numbers up there, but the way Kentucky has played, Rob. Because of the open date, would they come back sharp or would they be a little bit lackadaisical? They have not been that way at all. No, they haven't, Charlie. They've come back very, very sharp. You can tell that they really attended the business over the last couple of weeks. A long time to go without a football game, without being on the playing field, and Kentucky has come back out here tonight against LSU and really responded. 1.30 to play as O'Farrell gives it off. First man through for maybe two. And that will be third down, and Bill Curry will let the clock run. Cats may get off another play or two. Well, Kentucky has done it. Three straight wins in the Southeastern Conference for the first time since 1977 when the Wildcats won all six games. It's all been decided except perhaps the final score, 35-17 right now. And you really have to like the way this season now is starting to break down for Bill Curry's team. Pookie Jones is back, back on the field after he making a trip to the it. locker room. Third down and eight with 50 ticks to go. O'Farrell on the option left. Oh, is he smacked by Gary Pegues. 
He'll pop right back up if he can get up. He may get up a little wobbly, and he is. He is one tough little cookie, let me tell you. And he really took a shot. Take another look at this from ground level. Old Farrell coming out, looks back at his pitch man, decides to keep it, and he is really rocked backward by Piggies. He's all right. He stays right in there. Clock now running with 15 seconds, 14, 13, and Bill Curry's telling his team not to run another play. They're not going to put it in anymore. Not going to run up the score. It's going to be a 35-17 game. Kentucky's record goes to four and two overall, three and one in the league. LSU drops to two and five overall, one and four in league play. The final again, Kentucky 35, LSU 17. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a minute. We see Mike Archer, defensive coordinator at Kentucky, former head coach at LSU, before that defensive coordinator at LSU, has done such a fabulous job here in his first season at Kentucky and you look at the numbers up there, Kentucky with 35 points and LSU with 17, and, and Mike Archer is, is very responsible in part to what has uh, transpired here tonight. Well, that's true, Charlie. It has to be a satisfying evening for that man, and right now uh, he is just renewing a few old acquaintances down on the field. As he says farewell to a few of the folks that he worked with, some of them perhaps for seven years down in Baton Rouge. 35-17, Kentucky. No turnovers a couple of weeks ago on the 21-0 shutout of Ole Miss here. And tonight, no turnovers either. Oh, that's impressive. That's all. <laughs> what, what more can you say about that on a night like this under the kind of weather conditions that the Wildcats faced? And to come out and not turn it over at all, that's impressive. As you see, the freshman from Baton Rouge who plays for Kentucky, Van Hiles, running off the field. Be much easier for him to go home this summer. Sure Let's go will. down on the field out of Dick Gabriel. Dick? Well, Rob, Charlie Mack, while you guys were checking out the Wildcats, I walked through the LSU players on the way over here. Some awfully long faces, as you might expect. And just an unusual situation here in the Southeastern Conference now with LSU really struggling and Kentucky now in second place in the SEC East heading down to play a Georgia team, which amazingly is fighting for respect. Got a lot today with a big win over Vanderbilt, but an interesting situation setting up next week with a hot Kentucky team going down between the hedges to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. A game right now you would have to rate as a toss-up or perhaps even the one that would favor Kentucky. So a bizarre season right now, but a sweet one so far for the Wildcats and their fans. Let's go back upstairs. For our next telecast, a reminder to join us on November 13th as Kentucky will play host to the Pirates of East Carolina right here at Commonwealth Stadium. And also join Ralph Hacker and Rob Romley and Coach Bill Curry on the TV show tomorrow. Check your local listings on the Kentucky Football Television Network. Some final comments, Rob. Oh, an impressive night, Charlie. That's all you can say. Kentucky really stuck to business during the open dates. Got its head screwed on straight to come out here and play a fine ball game, both offensively and defensively, as they led it uh, at halftime by a count of 14 to three. And uh, we're never really in any serious danger here in this game tonight. Fine performance by Pookie Jones directing the offense and throwing the football. And Mo Williams, who went over 100 yards. Mo again. Williams, uh, some big runs. I believe his, what, his second 100-yard ride in a Kentucky uniform. Just a good, good showing all the way around. I know Bill Curry's got to be happy. Well, I know a lot of people here who got wet are extremely happy and look forward to the next game. I'm sure a lot of people will be going down to Athens, Georgia. The final once again, Kentucky 35, LSU 17 for Rob Romley and Dick Gabriel. This is Charlie Mack Alexander. So long from Lexington, Kentucky. University of Kentucky Wildcat football was brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By the Ashland Oil family of companies, urging you to get involved. When parents help, just imagine how much more a child can learn. By Great Financial Federal, your key to financial security. By Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, all-around coverage, all-around Kentucky. And by the Rural Electric Cooperatives of the East Kentucky Power System. And by Super 6 Best Quality Ford Dealers, Childers Oil Company, First Commonwealth Bank, Toyota Dealers, 
the Kentucky Lottery, Brazier's Farmer Supply, Kentucky Power Company, Lee's Famous Recipe, Cypress Mountain Coals, and First National Bank of Corbin.